603 on Thursday, the 10th of February, and I'm calling the Finance Committee meeting to order. First item on the agenda is the meeting minutes from January 13th. I'll make a motion that we accept the meeting minutes of January 13th. 13th. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't think Ted was there. That's why I was silent. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wow. Roll call. Wow. Okay. So next is Chief Knight, who is here to discuss his fire department, ambulance, and public safety building. Great. Well, thank you all for having me this evening on such short notice. Um, Obviously, the budget book for the fire department is quite large. It's like 38 pages. Uh, it's very in-depth. Um, and it really, you know, we have several line items that have big dollar amounts. But if you really drill down into the budget book, it really breaks it out very clearly of where every dollar is spent. Um, where are you going to start, Seth? So uh, why don't we start on, um, so obviously, this page here. So the fire department, the first one? Yeah, so the very first one. Yep. Um, basically, uh, what is in the um, tan color is my original request uh, to the town administrator. Um, and then what's in the yellow column is where we are, are at today and what you have in your budget. We don't have a color page. Tommy? Yeah, so that one right there. Yep. It just says You're requested and it says fine. town administrator recommended. Right, so. recommended. Yes. Grab the right one. <laughs> is it Sorry. I'm going the other way. Okay. We'll get there. Yeah. So if you want, you know, at some point, if you want to be able to look at what the requested was to what is recommended um, as of tonight, um, that's where we're at. Um, it shows FY22, which is our current uh, budget year we're in, and then FY21 um, is the budget we had before the cuts made last year. So that kind of gives you a, uh, the next page is the uh, history of uh, ambulance revenue uh, over the years. Uh, what's highlighted in yellow is our current fiscal year. Um, and this is up to date as of uh, the end of December and estimated um, for the next six months. Uh, Next page gives you a comparison of per capita spending um, compared to the uh, five Wachusett uh, district towns and some of our other bordering communities uh, to see where our per capita spending is um, on fire and EMS services compared to other towns. Um, so that's the easiest way to break it down is to take their total overall budget and break it down per capita to see you know what is being spent. Uh, the next page is uh, staffing, uh, staffing wage rates. Um, it's a very big staff. Uh, we have a staff of uh, uh, just over uh, 45 st members. Uh, we have 12 full-time and the rest are uh, paid on call uh, personnel. Um, so that kind of gives you an idea. Um, some of the numbers that are in this are brought forward in, in the budget book later on, but this is the calculations of how we got to those some of those numbers, uh, so you could see that. All right, so we'll start right on the, uh, the nice picture of Wachusa Regional High School here. And we'll just go line by line real quick. Um, all right, so... Um, I'm currently going to be going in FY23 at the final year of my current contract. Uh, so that is the final year of that uh, three-year contract uh, at 125. Uh, Chief holiday pay uh, under the Master General Law 48, Section 57E um, pays holiday pay uh, for certain holidays during the course of the year. Uh, so that's where that money uh, comes from there. Uh, obviously, it's adjusted to the per day uh, rate uh, at the new uh, annual salary. All right, next page. This is uh, part-time staff, so this is not full-time ambulance people. This is just the part-time staff within the department. 
Um, Karen was at a meeting back um, early December um, that I brought forward a new wage rate uh, for the part-time um, staff. Uh, that took effect in January, on uh, January 1st. Uh, and these are the uh, current rates um, now. In, um, I'm sorry, current rates at a 2% COLA. Um, so basically how we figured this out is we go by historical average of number of people that respond to calls and the number of calls that we utilize our on-call staff at 160. Uh, and that gives us the 26,182 uh, for on-call wages. Um, that's not even third of a one full-time person. Um, so we're getting a, a good deal um, <coughs> for the number of staff that we have. Uh, during the year, these uh, part-time people um, come to training twice a month. Uh, in that, we have uh, $12,000 uh, built into that line item uh, for training costs. Uh, my original request was for $38,000. has been adjusted down to thirty-six, dollars And I feel that's fine. Um, again, it comes down to averages. Again, we, we don't plan for the worst case scenario. We just basically plan on historical average number of calls used. All it takes is one wild spring brush fire season, two or three major structure fires a year that will throw this out of whack. And then in the last several years, we've had very dry seasons that we've actually turned money back. Um, so again, it, it's hit or miss. And you, know, you just do what you can uh, to come up with the best um, number that you, you feel comfortable with. And, and with the uh, reduction to 36,000, um, I feel perfectly confident with, so that's not, a, not an issue. Uh, the police chief and the fire chief share a um, department uh, uh, administrative assistant uh, for both departments. The police department gets 32 hours a week, I get eight hours a week. Uh, if you go back historically, <laughs> the fire department used to have a 24 hour a week uh, admin. Uh, that's been reduced down to the eight. Um, so basically what we have done, um, how I figured this out, my admin works every Friday for the fire department. And so this looks like a more than 2% increase in this line item is because there's one extra Friday um, in this calendar year that I will be responsible for paying for. So technically the police chief side will be a little less where mine's being a little bit more than 2%. Um, I know that the, uh, Several members of the Board of Selectmen are going through um, uh, wage and classification of um, steps uh, in looking at various items. Um, this individual has not received a step increase for several years, so I just kind of um, put it out there. If it was level funded, um, the 2% COLA, which is what I asked for, and then if a step was given, um, that's what that number would be. Just so if anyone asks, it's clearly it's there. Mm -hmm. It's already been calculated out based on the number of days worked. Okay. Um, purchase services. Well, basically, this is the, uh, you know, it's a big line item. Um, it encumbers a lot of items. So we can break it down. Um, we have a section for vehicle maintenance. And again, this is vehicle maintenance that um, we have to bring an outside service in to do. Um, or we um, purchase parts and then the DPW provides the labor. Uh, so that's where this would come out of. Uh, obviously we have a um, very large fleet of apparatus um, estimated at $1.5 million of purchase price um, back in the day that everything was purchased. It would be well over uh, two to two and a half million now at current day's value. So what's your, what is the, what is the replacement value of the fleet? Replacement yeah, value of the fleet is probably three million. Three million. Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, right now, the age of the apparatus, uh, the big heavy equipment trucks are getting older, so the repairs are becoming more costly. Mm -hmm. uh, everything's out of warranty, so we don't have warranty coverage on this, um, this apparatus. The newest engine we purchased was in 2012. Uh, the oldest is a 99. 99. 99. So, uh, just to kind of give you in perspective. Uh, obviously, we have to get state inspection st uh, stickers on a diesel truck. It's uh, $125 versus your vehicle is a little less. Uh, we are required by NFPA and uh, OSHA to uh, do pump testing. Uh, so that is done by an outside service that comes into the department and pressure tests the fire pumps on every apparatus. This information is gathered and stored and helps towards the town's ISO rating to keep our uh, fire classification low. 
but this also helps us in the maintenance process that as the uh, efficiency of the pump rating fails over time, we can predict the time for a, an overhaul of a pump uh, so we can plan for that. Uh, so you can, you can see that um, the gallons per minute flow is slowly declining over time, but it's still meeting the rating, but we can, we can pretty much predict uh, without a catastrophic failure that it's time to fix. Um, annually we're required to do ladder testing. Um, again, we bring an outside service in, a third party. They do a UL ladder test on the, on the vehicle. We get a sticker on the thing. We get a full report. Any deficiencies that have to be addressed, but again, that all goes towards the town's ISO rating, so it's a bonus as well. Uh, radio equipment, we have $400 for radio equipment. Basically, all that buys is batteries for portable radios and uh, pagers. Uh, it does not buy any radio hardware. Uh, we've been fortunate over the last several years to get um, state grants to acquire the actual devices themselves, so we've been very fortunate there. Um, on the loose equipment side, other, so this is the stuff that we carry on the trucks that um, is portable. Um, we have uh, hydraulic rescue tools, also known as the Jaws of Life. Uh, again, we bring in a service um, company every year uh, to service that, uh, make sure that it's safe to operate and that it's going to continue to be reliable. Uh, we have various small engine services that needs to be done, chainsaws, portable pumps, all kinds of various uh, small uh, items. Um, that's $500. Um, the SCBA, which is our SCAR air packs, what we wear for breathing apparatus going into a fire. Uh, they are annually flow tested uh, each year to make sure that um, they will be uh, reliable and continue to work appropriately and to make sure there's no contamination um, in the air quality of the tanks themselves. So all that is done. Uh, every five years we're required to hydro test or uh, pressure test the bottle of the air cylinder itself. They have to be sent out to be um, pressure tested. Um, and we split up our, um, right now we have uh, 40 bottles and we do, we split them up so many per year. So it's not one hit one year. So it's, it's spread out over several years. Uh, we do have a large air compressor uh, that fills um, this uh, as well. It is a uh, OSHA requirement that the air compressor be serviced annually and that air quality test be taken uh, so to make sure that we're not breathing any contamination uh, of poor, poor air uh, while we're fighting fires. And finally, we do hose testing. Uh, it's an NFPA requirement. We bring in a third party. We go down to uh, Clinton School and all 10,000 feet of hose that the fire department owns gets laid out in the in the driveway and gets pressure tested up to the uh, manufacturer's testing. And that's how, where we determine failures. And that's how we find that failures before something happens. Um, things are taken out of service. If they can be repaired, we repair them. If they're completely out of date, uh, then they are uh, uh, put that surplus property. Uh, we usually offer them to the water department just for you know pumping out basements. They don't need the high pressure. They can just use that. So it gets offered to other departments before it goes. Uh, service contracts, we have a, um, uh, a staffing um, contract with the lab tech. Basically what this is, is I manage um, 12 full-time staff and it's basically a uh, scheduling software and it shows all their shifts and anytime it tracks all their uh, paid sick time, um, vacation time, comp time, holiday pay, pay comp, it does everything. So if someone calls out sick, I mark them as sick. Everyone gets a page saying there's an open shift. If they want to choose to fill it, they can fill it on their phone, and then it just makes scheduling so much easier uh, and more efficient. Uh, so we've had that for several years. Chief, is this the same that the police will use? The police use a different software, but they use this uh, very, so police and dispatch use a similar software. This is more towards um, the fire service because of our unique style shifts. Okay. Um, so it, it encompasses all that as well. Okay. Uh, it also allows us to put our part-time people in, in the system as well. So um, they will get a page as well if a shift becomes available and a shift is given based on number of um, shifts that they have filled in the past. So the lowest person with number of hours so will get qualify. Will qualify. Okay. Yep, so it works out very well. Um, communication, cell phone, uh, basically there's a uh, provision in the contract uh, for a stipend for $750. Um, I own my personal cell phone. 
Uh, this is not a town cell phone. Um, so I get $750 a year for my personal phone. Um, it is managed and monitored by the town IT guy to make sure that um, public information and stuff like that is controlled. Uh, so, but it, I just didn't want to carry two phones. <laughs> so, so. Uh, lastly, um, going back to SCBAs, we have a, a face mask that um, each member wears. Uh, you're required to have it fit tested uh, to your face each year as people age, body shapes change, gain weight, lose weight. So we want to make sure that the seal around it um, is good. So we um, partner with our um, District 8 Regional Fire Control, purchase the testing machine, and we borrow the machine. And then in order for us to get the certification, we pay so much per member to get the certification. So is each one of the masks individual? No. So the full-timers have personal masks. Okay. And all the rest are uh, left in the trucks so anyone can grab. So, so the testing that, that would be done. Yep. Yeah. So the testing would be done based on small, medium, and large. Okay. So that, that's, so basically we have those available. So if, okay. if you grab one that's a large and you're a small, you just grab it off out of the shelf and you just swap them out. Got it. So. Is that part of the contract, so? For the full-timers, yes. The full-timers are uh, in their contract. They get their own personal face mask. Um, when is their contract, though? It's currently in negotiation now to start uh, for next year. This coming July will be up. June 30th of this year will be done. Okay. Yep. So uh, my original ask was for $31,100. Uh, um, I see Paul's in my computer, servicing my computer right now. <laughs> Yeah, 25 one. Uh, and that's where I'm currently at right now. Uh, but if you go back to FY21, I was at 34. Mm -hmm. So uh, I basically I was trying to regain what I lost, but not go much further <coughs> ahead. But again, it, it's last year we were able to get, so in order to get the 25, what is cut <coughs> is the servicing of outside vendors coming in and servicing. That's where the cuts are made. Last year we had money left over at the end of the year that was transferred into expense accounts that we basically did our service at the last week of June. And so we, we basically bought a year of time. Um, so if we can find money in the, you know, with increased revenues or whatever changes in the budget, that's one item that I would look at. Uh, next one, uh, uh, fire supplies account. Um, this is pretty basic. Um, general office supplies, um, this would be tangible office items, not paper <coughs> goods. Um, so if we needed to replace a computer or monitor um, on the fire side, uh, this is where that would come from. Um, all paper in uh, pens, toner, ink, all that stuff is paid through through the public safety building because we do bulk purchasing for all three departments through that. Um, custodial supplies, this is not building custodial supplies. This is vehicle washing, uh, wax, um, stuff to keep the apparatus clean. Uh, so that's, that's what that is. Um, under the vehicle, um, basically DBW provides the labor. We provide the oil and filters, uh, so they do uh, that work. Uh, if we go out and have Pete's Tire Barn come in and change a tire, um, it comes out of this. Uh, new uh, diesel emissions, the new motors require DEF, or diesel exhaust fluid. Uh, so that's a new expense. Um, batteries. Um, give you a perspective, your normal car has one 12 volt battery, fire apparatus has six um, that get replaced every couple of years and the batteries are much larger and they're you know almost $200 a battery so they, it goes very quickly um, and again any miscellaneous parts that the DPW needs to acquire is in there. So maintenance done in the yard or down at the DPW? At the DPW by their mechanics. So the truck goes down? Yeah we bring the truck down to them, yep. Um, training basically this helps us provide uh, supplies and books and uh, registration costs uh, for training for the members. Uh, so that's what that is. Uh, so that line is at fifteen thousand. Um, and again, I was trying to get back to where we were in twenty one. Um, let's see analysis of other charges uh, fifty seven hundred. Um, there's no money available for in-state or out-of-state uh, travel for training for myself. Um, I do that on my own. Um, training expense, expenses for professional development. 
um, these are costs uh, to going to local um, seminars within Massachusetts. Um, we pay dues to memberships to the Fire Chiefs Association of Massachusetts, uh, National Fire Protection Association. Uh, we belong to District 8, which is basically Northern Worcester County. It's a fire mutual aid district. Um, so we pay a fee to that, to belong to that. And if anyone has a kind of burning permit, you go online, fill it out, while well, there's a fee for that service. Um, so that's what that brush burning permit fee of $300 is. Um, so all that money, all the burning permits at $25 comes in, people process it, it goes to the general fund. None of that money comes back to the fire department. But there is a cost to manage that, um, that online account. Chief, um, wouldn't, it, wouldn't the travel for training be covered as part of your contract? Um, again, my contract says upon appropriation. So if okay. the if town doesn't appropriate the money, it's not not given. So. Okay. Um. <laughs> Don't plant a seed. Yeah. Um, again, there's been um, no cut in that. Um, that that's funded at what I requested. Um, all right. Um, additional equipment. Um, years ago. Uh, replacement equipment and additional equipment were all one line item and then Margaret has separated it out. Um, additional equipment are items that are not considered we are on a replacement cycle. Uh, you purchase it, it lasts, you know, 10, 15 years. Um, so we're looking at some items that we, we need to get. Um, we're trying to basically, in order for us to get a better <coughs> ISO rating, each apparatus has to carry a certain type in amount of equipment on them to get maximum credit. And so some of the items that we don't have, we're trying to chip away at some of these each year in order to get maximum credit. Uh, for the last several years, we've been level funded at 5,000. Um, but again, unfortunately, not in, you can't blame COVID for this, but anything public safety related, fire related, service related is just very, very expensive. Um, so uh, again, uh, it's just something to keep an eye out. So. In the future, if I come back for a special article or for an item, this is what I'm trying to do, is trying to chip away at some of these things. We've been very fortunate. Um, this year, we were able to get a uh, $15,000 uh, grant through um, the State Fire Marshal's Office. So we're able to plug away at some of these big items uh, this year. So we're, we're really knocking some things down uh, and doing some good work here. Um, replacement equipment, again, this is all about replacing uh, items um, that have a shelf life or a, a, a normal turnover period. Uh, turnout gear is supposed to be according to the manufacturer, um, and if it's according to the manufacturer's recommendation, NFPA says you must follow the recommendation of the manufacturer. So turnout gear lasts seven years. Um, can it last more? Yes, uh, but if something happens, the first thing you know, uh, NIOSH is going to do is come back and look at the date of that and they're going to write you up for it and we could be potentially on the hook. Do you get any credit for if you have to turn it back in? I mean, if you have a... No, because unfortunately, turnout gear, once it's exposed to um, hazardous environment, right. it no longer can be given away or it can't, there's no trade-in value because it's going to be disposed of. Does it create a risk for uh, your guys? So, we wash it after every, so our policy is after every fire related call that we're in a toxic environment, that everyone must wash their gear. Okay. Um, again, um, years ago, the dirtier your gear were, the better firemen you were, <laughs> you know, it was all macho. Now that because the number one ki uh, killer of firefighters is cancer. Right. And it's all coming back to the turnout gear that we're wearing, that we're dirty. Yeah. Um, if you go back several years, the, in order to make it fire resistant, the, the chemicals they put in the gear to make it fire resistant causes cancer. The firefighting foam that we use to put out fires causes cancer. Um, so we're exposed to carcinogens every day, unfortunately. So, is so. each firefighter um, uh, cleaning, I guess, washing their own gear? Yeah, so we have a facility within the <laughs> station to wash and dry. Okay. Yeah, so we take care of that. Um, Unfortunately, we have 40-some members of the department. Got to get in line. So basically, um, the replacement of them, we need five to six sets of gear every year yeah. to otherwise, 
If you go back 10 years ago, we came forward with a big ask of $30,000 to buy 20 sets all at once. Um, so now we've been slowly trying to keep up with replacement. Uh, each set of gear is measured and tailored to the individual uh, for proper fit, and it has to fit perfectly because if it's too bulky, the chance of getting uh, smoke and heat inside the gear is very dangerous. Um, so that's why um, we take care of that. Uh, the last several years it's been cut. This is the line item that's been cut. Uh, this is an area um, that has been cut again, but we may come forward at the special before the annual with an article um, for this turnout gear if there's free cash available. So it just so if you see an article, will be coming, coming forward with an article. Yeah. For so, this item. so question. Yeah. Yep. So is this part timers or is this full timers? Both. Here? Both. So you're only buying are the full timers gear replacement the same cycle as yes it's every seven years every seven years in in their contract the full timers get two sets of gear and the reason for that is because the wet. chance of using them getting wet the problem is if your gear gets wet and you come back from a fire and it's wet you can't go back out on a meet another fire call with wet gear because the gear will turn to steam inside your gear and you'll get steam burns so that's why you need to be able to quickly change, you know, for late, because they work a 24 hour shift. So the chance of having another fire during that same shift is potential. So that way they can swap gear, clean the other one, get it dried, and get it back in service. Are, are your part time people, are your, is your part time population stable? And then there's not a lot of turnover there? It's, so the turnover is interesting that, um, because you you, you have a right because of the cost. Well, no, the only yeah. thing I'm asking is because you said what you said was they were they're individualized. Correct. Okay. So yeah. So I, I I would say we're the average <laughs> life of a part time firefighter in the fire service is about five years. Okay. Okay. That they come on board, they get trained, they stick around for five years, and it's usually the younger generation, you know, eighteen, tw early twenties, and you know, they're the ones that are going to college. They get married, they move away, um, or we get them trained, they're stuck around for a while. They can't afford to live in the town because they move out of the parents' home, so they try to find other place to live, or they um, get hired on a full-time fire department somewhere else. Um, so we try to retain them if they do, because that's just better for us. Um, but then we do have a core set of, I won't say old-timers, but an older population within the department that have been on for 10, 15, 20 years or more um, that have, have just, they'll be here till they're 65. Okay. Um, so. So I guess, can I go back to Sure, this? yep. So you're saying here that each set of gear is about $3,300. Yes. So if I take 40 guys, buy three sets of gear, am I making that number? Right. What do you mean? We're not going to be able to replace all the gear in seven years. Correct. Correct. Yeah, I mean, right now the budget it only has three sets. I mean, you go back three <coughs> years ago, it had seven sets a year. But every year it's gotten cut because it. Well, the number hasn't changed. Well, the price of it's gone up. So we have, do we have... I guess what my question is, do we have 40 sets of gear or do we have 40 plus the full-timer sets of gear? We have 40 plus the full-timers. So we have 50 40. No, I'm sorry. No, so we have 40, we have total, 40 total. 40 total minus 12 of, of minus. So 24 are full-timers. Okay. Because they have two. They have two. And then you have another 20 of part-timers. So I'm going to ask the town manager administrator TA sorry manager whatever administrator. why are we how are we justifying that these guys aren't gonna have gear in a couple of years well, I mean, all I could tell you right now is we're funding or the plan that we have is to fund what he requested so so he, he has a time to do three, it so I'm saying where is that coming up how are we getting to the 40 well we don't need 40 this year no 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 but you need some portion of I, I need five to seven a year Right. All right. Years. So future five. years, you can come back yes. and ask well, for no, more. Well, that's where I'm going, but yeah. that number doesn't, three doesn't right. get me there. Right. right. Oh, yeah, I that's agree with that. Saying. Yep. Yep. But that doesn't mean next year you can't come back and ask for five or whatever. Right. I mean, he's no, got seven I mean, years. You've got to be closer to that number. Right. So mm -hmm. if you go back 
four budget cycles ago, it was ten ten thousand dollars. The set of gear was two thousand dollars for a whole set. As the price of gear has increased dramatically, we haven't changed the number. We've reduced the sets. Well, so that that's you know it's just. I'm not arguing your point. Right. I'm trying to support your point that right. this is dear near and dear to my heart. We yep. can't go down with this number. I don't care where we go with this number. That number is not going to work. Right. Well, so the question comes down to risk. Right. <clears throat> if you have, if we're replacing three at a time instead of five at a time, yep. you're going to, you could very easily run into a situation where you don't have the right amount of gear to go right. up to a fire. Now what? Right. So in, in that case, if we got up to a point where we didn't get it at town meeting, I would come back in October at the fall town meeting with free cash and say, hey, this is, I would make the case <laughs> at that point and, you know, let the boards, you know, you guys in the select board know that, hey, we need to address this. We need, you know, a boost, a shot in the arm, basically, to get us back up to par, and then we'll continue. So. Well, there was, was there was, you said there was an article a few years ago to buy a slug of gear. Yeah. That, that was isn't in, ready to replace that, <coughs> is it? That was in 2012. You were here. No, there was another article, too, wasn't there? That yeah, was to buy the second set for the full-timers. Oh, the second set. That was to buy the second so set. So I guess where I'm going, on top of this, we're going to run out of gear for the guys, or they're going to get old. Yeah. It's a liability when it goes over seven years because right. the first thing one of these guys is going to say is that I got burned because my gear is That's over right. seven years. Right. That's right. Yeah. So I don't care what we do. This is one of those we don't give the police officers no gun or bolts to go out every right. day. <laughs> this is one of the things bullets. these guys need. This is near and dear to my heart. So <sighs> I'm not going to, I don't know how we're going to fix this, but this is one of the ones that can't be go, it, it can't stay like this. Darren, I think the best approach for me to, would be to take a full inventory of, of your, your manufacture date of all the inventory mm -hmm. and see where we are in the replacement cycle. Could you, could you do that so I would have yeah, a couple so, so we can see the yeah, fight for you? Yep. But this yep. is not, yep. to me, and, I'll, and this isn't you because mm -hmm. you're trying, yep. it's unacceptable, sir, that these guys are going out with gear right. that's, uh, and it's not your fault, we no. gotta cut somewhere. But the the liability from several so, points of view is going to fire I, away this money, I, and, I, and I can't I can't do this. That I'm not going to do this. To I, these guys. I can't speak to the future, right? But there's years where we have better free cash, and we have other years. In those years where we have more free cash, we should probably buy more replacement gear. So we're going to have to look at it from a year to year basis and make it. And the chief. The chief's not going to put himself in a position where he doesn't have enough gear, so he's going to have heads up time to be able to talk to us and, and figure out how he's going to get enough gear to, to maintain on the seven level, seven year switches. But if the chief could <clears throat> do me the favor, absolutely, yeah. of getting an inventory and yep. use, yep, so we can, in my mind, I'm trying to think down the road also, right. yep, and uh, that's all wrong. I, I'm not scared of this request. request. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, that's fine. Uh, the next item is uh, replacement hose. Um, so we have to replace hose on, on a rotating basis, and again, this thirty-five hundred dollars basically replaces what fails during the hose testing. <laughs> um, so we're not gaining any more hose; we're just uh, replacing what fails. Um, and then this thirty-five hundred dollars for um, any other safety compliant equipment uh, that we need to replace. So, chief, yep. from the perspective of the hose, mm -hmm. with all the houses and everything being built in yep. town, are you? Are you at a risk of being farther away from a water source? Well, and need more hose? No, not necessarily. Um, there's a couple, couple issues that have been brought to the planning board's attention <coughs> that um, these uh, common driveways or these estate lots that mm -hmm. houses have put way, way in the back. Right. Uh, those are concerning because of the length of the driveway. We only carry so much um, supply hose on an engine, um, so we can only go down a thousand feet down the driveway, and then another truck would have to finish it if it's any longer. Yeah, but then you have to hit. You have to get to the source. The water source. Well, so you can remember, only twenty-five percent of the town has hydrant system. Yeah, exactly. So, and there's only a handful of other dry hydrants or drafting points within the community spread out. Right. Um, that needs to be addressed, um, and that was brought up during the ISO rating, that we need to look for rural water supplies. And how we handle rural water supply is 
we do it in tanker shuttles. So we bring our three uh, three thousand gallon tanker to the scene that provides water to the engine, and then mutual aid brings the tanker trucks in, and then we shuttle water. So it's mutual aid. It's, uh, absolutely, we okay. can't do it all on our own. Okay. No town can do it all on our own, right. and that's why we rely so heavily on mutual aid. Okay. Thank you. Um, so that's how that's dealt with. Uh, all right. Uh, emergency management uh, is pretty much level funded uh, from last year. Uh, the only thing that went up was uh, other charges and expenses to 3500 um, Basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to leverage the emergency management planning grant that comes out every year through MEMA and it's a 50% match. So. Because of our population change and the amount of money that they get from the federal government, uh, we're eligible for um, six thousand dollars. But we have to match three thousand of that. We have to match fifty percent of it. So we're trying to leverage the three thousand to get six. Uh, so we do that every year, and that's what we've done. Uh, we bought um, portable radios with it. We bought a laptop, uh, portable laptops like this uh, that can go in my command car. Uh, we bought bulletproof vests for the ambulance in the past because uh, we've had to have that. So those are the things that we're targeting. Um, so that's where we've been uh, leveraging our money. Uh, the interesting thing is emergency management uh, wages at $1,500. Uh, it's a line item that um, Dan and I had talked about because if we have a potential storm that um, it's going to be a long duration that we potentially could get state or federal reimbursement from. All the wages will be dumped in that account and it'll be negative spent, and then the federal money would come back was, it would come back into that because we needed a, a line item for that. Um, I will say I, I would like at some point uh, the look down the future that um, during this last two years, it's coming up on two years in a couple weeks here um, during this pandemic. Uh, my role as both the fire chief and the emergency <coughs> management director has been a complete uh, chaos as far as I'm just spread too thin. I can't, you know, a natural disaster that lasts one or two weeks, snowstorm, ice storm, tornado, um, you can quickly recover from that and, you know, get everything uh, back and uh, running smoothly. But for something that's been this duration this long, I can't do, I can't wear both hats. Um, so, as my staff gets bigger, I need support staff or an assistant to help me manage the emergency management piece, but also a member outside of the union, bargaining union, to help me with administration and supervision um, as the department gets bigger. Um, so I just want you know to look at it. If you look at the town of Holden, Holden has an assistant emergency management director fully paid out of, out of this line item that's a full-time firefighter, mm -hmm. um, you know, so, you know, there, there are other towns that have done similar things. Um, I know they, that's what they did in Southbridge when they brought the deputy in there, mm -hmm. um, you know, so that they wear both hats um, because if it, there is a, a large-scale <laughs> incident, you know, the deputy chief or the assistant chief wears one hat and then the fire chief wears the other and then they can continue to move the town. But that would be a new position. That would be a new position okay. and not funded. So I'm not okay. proposing that, but I just want no, no, I you all to be aware that right. this um, you know, there may be grant funding available that we can uh, move forward. If we could bring in a deputy for three or four years, groom them, and then I can retire, that'd be great. Hey, so, hey, yeah. so, <laughs> so, all right, we'll get into the ambulance budget. Um, ambulance budget, again, um, obviously it's, it's the biggest budget of the fire department. Um, obviously the biggest expense on the ambulance side is wages. Um, so this basically gives you a general overview of, of the history of staffing within the department, uh, gives you a line item number uh, for both uh, regular wages and uh, overtime wages as I requested. Um, when I put this budget together, I did not want, I put everyone's steps that they were doing the con current contract because the contract's expiring. I didn't feel comfortable putting a Kohler amount in it because it wasn't negotiated yet. So I didn't. So that's why these numbers are different than what you see on yours. Uh, the town administrator and I talked about what that potential number could be, and that's why it is plugged into your current number now. So across every union, you're going to see a 2% <coughs> in every budget for Kohler's across the unions while they're being negotiated. 
had to put we had to put something in there. Otherwise, yeah, we'd have a big hole in there. Yes. Yeah. Is that two over the life of the contract, each year? No, we're talking about just the first year. Yeah, we can worry about the others later. But it will be a three-year contract when we're done. It'll be a three. It'll be a three. Year. All of it will be three years. Contract. Yeah. Um, as you know, the uh, federal safer grant, uh, we come up February second of next year. Will be the expiration of that. Um, so the town will assume 100 percent of the wages uh, for those uh, three individuals. <coughs> Um, I just want to point out that this year it looks like a hundred thousand dollar increase or hundred twenty thousand mm dollar -hmm. increase just because this year starting uh, two weeks ago um, we went from 75 percent reimbursed to 35 percent reimbursed so all next year we're going to be at 35 and then we're going to drop to uh, zero mm -hmm. on February so that's why you see such a big increase if you look at the um, wages of these three individuals over the last three years, um, it's $165,500 before the contract increase. Um, ambulance revenue over the same period of time has gone up $187,000. Granted, I don't show the ambulance revenue against my budget to offset it, so you can see, see it because that money goes to the general fund and just gets absorbed everywhere else within the town, which is fine. But I just want to, you know, say to you that when we accepted this at town meeting, town meeting voted it, um, I was tasked with, you know, finding the revenue to support them at the end of this. Um, we went out, we uh, got an agreement with the town OCAM to provide the ambulance service that's generated more money for us. They pay us. Um, so that's helped. Uh, we're also part of a uh, Medicaid reimbursement program that because we have Devro and we transport their kids so often and they're coming from out of state and they're on different state Medicaid programs through the federal government, we are petitioning through um, the federal government to recapture lost ambulance revenue. And so that amounts to about $65,000 a year that we recover. Um, just so you know, a Medicaid only patient, we only get $227 for an ambulance ride. Mm. So we're trying to recover, you know, uh, some of that because of our, we show what our overall expenses are. Um, are we contractually obligated to the services facility at Devro? The only thing that we potentially can wipe our hands clean with is any clinician that works there that schedules a Section 12 mental evaluation through a clinician <coughs> that's scheduled could be done by a private uh, ambulance service. Because the clinician is with the patient all the time, they could wait the 20 to 30 minutes for a private ambulance service to come. Mm -hmm. But that clinician only works nine to five, Monday through Friday, um, and anything off hours or any type of uh, uh, assault or any other, other than that becomes a true 911 emergency and then becomes our responsibility. So I guess where I'm going for the group, we're obligated to go to that role because it's a facility in that time. Correct. Yep. Okay. Yep. And they only pay us a fraction of what Correct. is actually deserved. Correct. Um, Could you, do you have a, a realistic number what that rose should be paying? I mean, if, if, um, <coughs> Feds pay two hundred and whatever that number was two twenty nine. Did they? Is there a certain number that we're missing every call that we go up there? Would you? What would you say? Uh, that obviously, happens? it is, but that's why we've got into the program to recover that revenue. But is the is it? Does it recover it all, Seth? Well, I, I would say I would say it is, we're probably getting eighty percent. Okay. Um, but if you look at the town as a whole, um, as a <clears throat> general population. That's probably what our recovery rate is from our general taxpayer. And there's so, some people that are uninsured, you get right. nothing. So, you well, know, or whatever you get through the uninsured fund. Yeah. Right. So we're, just, we're supplementing them as much as we're supplementing the residents of the town, I would say. So. Okay. Does well, the Devereaux's town people have taxpayers too, and Devro's not, right? Correct. Right. Yep. Well, and where this I'm going with this, does Devro still give a donation to the town every year? Just mm -hmm. to the police department, yes. Just to the police Just department? Just to the police, yeah. And it's in the tune of a cruiser? 
hundred grand a year? No, it's 40, 42,000. 42,000. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. For, a per, it's for a person, isn't it? It's supposed to be half a salary or something. Or half of yeah. a salary, okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, purchase services, very similar to the fire department side. It's just kind of repeated on the ambulance side. Uh, vehicle maintenance program, 10,000. Um, radio equipment, again, $250. Um, service contracts, uh, this is required. We are required to pay this. Um, we have uh, cardiac monitors um, that are very high tech, hospital grade. This is the ones you see, actually see in the emergency room. They're <coughs> identical units. Uh, they do the exact same thing. We have the capability of doing the exact same thing. Uh, we have the manufacturer has to come out each year to service them. Uh, part of the service contract, they provide us free batteries. Thank goodness. Um, but they also make sure that the, um, the EKG uh, system is working appropriately. Uh, the electricity that's being delivered is the right uh, amount. Uh, so that's done every year. Um, there are several other things on the um, uh, ambulance we carry. We carry uh, IV pumps because uh, there's certain medications that we have to put in an IV pump and drip in. So those are calibrated and uh, looked at every year. Um, so th those are the things. Uh, training and lectures, so if we have to bring an outside lecturer in, that covers uh, that. Uh, billing company, again, this can be anywhere. We pay 5% of whatever they collect. Mm -hmm. So <coughs> I have not changed this amount in the last three or four years. Um, it probably should be going up because we're obviously generating more money. So as I'm paying more, I'm paying less somewhere else. It's, I'm, I'm cutting it from somewhere else, obviously. Um, but again, <clears throat> now, ALS intercept fees, what that is, is we operate three ambulances. We're out on various calls. We can staff two ambulances 90% of the time with our full-time staff. They're out on calls. We get a third call. Our part-time staff comes back, but they're not paramedics. They're basics, and they take a patient that needs advanced service. Holden or Paxton is called to intercept on the way to the hospital. Mm -hmm. They get in the back of our ambulance and they charge us three hundred and fifty dollars. Mm -hmm. We build the entire advanced level of care, and and then uh, we get that revenue, but we have to pay them. This only happens maybe four or five times a year. It's not a big number, um, so we just absorb it um, th throughout the year. Uh, but it's just so you are aware. Um, so if you ever look on the uh, expense sheet and you see town of bear, you know town of packs and town of holding, that's what that is. So, um, uh, ambulance supplies, uh, basically again fuel, oil, and tires of three thousand. So really, if you break that down, it's a thousand dollars per ambulance a year. Um, and believe me, we do brakes, tires, oil change. Uh, very expensive, and that's reciprocal. We do bill them three fifty. Yes, absolutely. So Anytime we yes, it, it goes back and forth. Yeah. Back and forth. Yeah, it goes back and forth. Yep. Uh, medical supplies. Um, this pays <coughs> basically all of our, <coughs> our tangent, our basically disposable items in medications. Um, <coughs> the cost of medications is going through the roof. Yeah. Obviously, everyone heard about the epipens and all that stuff. Um, there's actually again we have an. Uh, not epi pens, but cardiac dose of epi for cardiac arrest is in such short supply. And it's not the drug, it's the plastic <coughs> that is in it that we use to deliver it. Sure. And so that's the issue is, so now we're doing, we're doing all kinds of weird things. Um, <coughs> there are certain medications that cost almost $150 per dose. So you, know, you have a significant medical emergency, and we give you know, uh, cardism uh, to a patient in AFib. You know, you know that's eighty-five dollars a dose. Uh, Narcan now is forty-two dollars, so it's very expensive. Um, but we could buy fentanyl for someone that broke their leg for forty-five cents. There you go. Something wrong. But. Yeah. Um, <coughs> Licensing fees, uh, obviously in order to operate an ambulance, we have to pay uh, the state of Massachusetts their fair cut. Um, so we pay uh, them, um, uh, let's see, $600 a year for the license, and $200 per vehicle. Um, we have a food and drug license, that's what allows us to carry the medications on the truck, so we pay them $600 a year. Uh, Image Trend, this is our software that we use uh, all of our medical records are paperless, so everything is done electronically. 
um, which is great because now everyone can read it. Um, it's legible. Um, our billing company goes in, in it once a week. They extract all the information out. They can bill right away, and then it's automatically sent. The patient's records automatically sent to the hospital. So it's very, very efficient. Uh, it's very secure, um, and it's working out very well. Um, so that's what that line is. And again, that was a $30,000 ask, and uh, it's at 26000 which is $1,000 more than this year. But the biggest increase was all around the cost of medication and supplies. It's, that's the biggest area um, that is an issue. And if you need it, you're going to need it. Yeah. Uh, exactly, yes. Um, so I, I, I will say we've gone into June so short that we borrowed from other towns and given it back in July. <laughs> so uh, we've, we've had to do that in years past. So um, our other charges account, um, obviously because we are an advanced life support uh, service, we have a medical control doctor or, um, that w works with us because paramedics work under the doctor's license. So we are directly attached to the ER doctor and we work under the authority of their license. Um, and they're giving us a, a set of guidelines or uh, protocols that these are the things that we can treat uh, before we have to ask for permission. Um, so that's um, a very important fee uh, that we pay. It's gone up um, in the last couple of years. Uh, and the reason why it's gone up is our call volume's gone up. So the more calls we do, obviously, the more costs, it's more supervision that they're doing for us. Um, in Central Mass EMS, which is down in Holden on Holden Street, uh, they're our radio communication hub between us and the hospital. They control all the um, radio uh, dispatch points throughout the whole state. So no matter if we go to Gardner, we go to Worcester, we go out towards uh, Mary Lane and Wing out in Palmer, um, we can just hit any radio tower and they can patch us through to the hospital. Uh, there's a fee associated with that. Um, certifications, um, as the, uh, all of our EMS staff uh, recertifies with the states, uh, CPR, uh, advanced life support, uh, pediatric life support, um, their state licensing fee uh, is all paid by the town, and that's contractual, and the part-timers as well get their uh, um, fee reimbursed as well. Uh, uniform allowance, uh, currently it's at $900 per person uh, per the union contract, out of the 12 of them. Um, <clears throat> there's money in there for myself and there's money in there for our part-time staff that we bring on as well. Uh, years ago, um, there was a line item in the fire brigade to buy uniforms um, because of fundraising difficulties that was taken out and it was absorbed by the town uh, because a fire department badge should come from the town of Rutland, not from the fire brigade. So mm -hmm. we've, we absorbed that. Uh, the last thing is uh, equipment and outlay, um, basically. Um, that basically buys backboards, you know, uh, various uh, loose equipment that are it's on the truck um, that we need that gets damaged over time. Uh, and that's been, uh, so it used to be 6,000. This year it uh, was reduced to three <coughs> cut in half. I asked to go back to six and now it's at five. So at least it's making progress. So, um, next page is a list of the entire staff of the department. Uh, just so you can see where we're at. Uh, obviously, if you're not aware, our deputy chief, our part-time deputy chief, retired um, December 31st. Um, we had an article a couple years ago to extend him beyond 65. So he turned 67. We had a big party, so he's gone. At this point, there's no, um, we're not in, in the position to make any, any movement or any changes within the department rank structure at this point. Um, so we're just going to stay with that position vacant for this time. So is, is the position funded? It, it's a part-time and they only get paid when they come on a call. Okay. Because it's a part-time position. They, they don't get an annual <coughs> stipend, they don't get any of, any of that. So yeah, that's the deputy chief? That was the deputy chief, yes. Okay. Yep. So that pretty much sums up the uh, fire and ambulance budget. Um, as a whole, um, we are doing amazing work with the staff we have and the call volume we're seeing. Um, some of you may have heard this before, you, some of you came in. In the last 10 days, we've done 62 ambulance calls mm -hmm. in 10 days. Um, 
We're up to 215 calls since January 1st. We're, that's 65 calls more than last year at this time. Um, it is very, very busy. Um, and the problem we're seeing is, again, in, and it's not just our town, um, during the daytime hours, our part-time staff work their normal jobs out of town. We don't have industry in town that they can, they're working in town. Um, so we are very short-handed during the day. So during the day, our staffing is four people in the building from seven in the morning to seven at night. Um, we don't backfill. So if someone calls out sick, we, we don't budget for sick time. There's, there's no money in my overtime budget for anyone calling out sick. So we don't backfill if they're sick. So that, some days we may go down to three during the day. So that means only two ambulances can go out, and the other one basically is going to wait for someone to come back, or I go with them if I'm available. Um, so th there's a lot of things um, in our overtime budget that, you know, we, we just go his by historical. You know, you know people take vacation, so vacation, uh, personal time uh, that they get, holiday time, we only budget for 50% of that time to backfill that person. Um, so we're not full, you know, you may say, yeah, you have four people during the day, but if you take all their vacation time that they're earned and allowed to take, personal time, all that, probably we're at full staffing maybe 70% of the year, you know, because we don't fund to backfill those positions because there's just no money. Um, and we do the best we can. Um, we bring in part-timers anytime we can um, because they're, obviously it's a lower rate of pay. Um, but contract says they have first rate of refusal. <coughs> the union does. Um, so again, we try to uh, manage that. Chief, the number of calls that you're going to receive. Yep. <coughs> when are they mostly during the day? Those those calls or are they? Um, surprisingly, it's you could roll your dice. Uh, for example, today's Thursday, so. Tuesday morning at midnight, from midnight to 6 in the morning, they did five ambulance calls really? in the middle of the night. Um, and then, you know, two or three during the day. Yeah. So and, and, and it fluctuates. Some days it's like, you know, straight out all day long, and it's, you know, they, it's a quiet night. And, wow. and, and some days it, it's hit or miss. Um, I can actually give you a, a, a spreadsheet of... <coughs> calls per you know per day of the week by right. hours of the day to really see where where this craziness is happening right. um, it is interesting that the town is growing um, we put in all these 60 uh, 55 and over developments in you know 15 20 years ago thinking that was oh we're not putting kids in the school this is great they're moving in well guess what when they're 55 when they bought it well guess how old they are now yeah. so we're going to these places a lot more now um, we're you know, we're providing services to uh, these areas that we weren't before. Um, Hawthorne Hills, that elderly housing we had to have on Main Street. We're old people on that. This is still, <laughs> <all right. laughs> so in spite of what he's saying, the, the good thing about that, at least the seniors were billing through ambulance charges. Yes. yes. Kids, you yeah, don't get right. any reimbursement. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. so, that's right. <laughs> yeah, so in, given the two, it's not. Yeah. You know. um, we, we are. We are out, I mean, the calls that we, we show on the Facebook page and stuff like that, that's just the 911 emergencies we go to. That doesn't show you all the inspections that are done every day on, on the resale of homes, or you know, you change a furnace, new construction, plan reviews, all these things, you know, commercial inspections that are done by the full-time staff every single day. It's very, very busy. We have, yeah, we have those two. Um, and the, the other issue that we're, we're seeing um, over the last six months to really a year is as we've seen COVID increase, you know, you know peaks, it causes stress on the hospitals. Mm -hmm. And that's just a trickle down effect to a stress on us because we pick up a patient and we can't get them patient <laughs> off of our stretcher onto a hospital stretcher because there's no beds. So we're waiting in the hospital and we still have, now. The, we can't leave them there with unattended because it's the abandonment of a patient. Right. So we'll be in, in the hospital with our cardiac monitor on our stretcher <laughs> treating them, and there's no nurse or doctor around. So hopefully nothing serious happens until we can get a bed for them. So we can be there for up to an hour, hour and a half sometimes, and that just delays them returning back to town. 
So, so it, it is a significant problem. Of risk. Yep. <clears throat> I mean, there's a, there seems to be a lot of risk here, where you may not be able. You can do your job now. You're you're making. Um, you're making do with what you have. Yep. You're doing a great job at it. But is there a risk that that could come crashing down on you at some point? And do you have, I, I mean, is there a way for you uh, to see that tsunami coming in? It, it, it's difficult, obviously. Um, again, it, it all revolves around staffing. Mm -hmm. You know, if the biggest issue we've had this year is 95% of my full-time staff in the last six months have tested positive for COVID. Yeah, see. And that was, I mean, we, we lost an entire shift. Mm -hmm. So now we're rearranging people to cover. Um, so now we've gone from four shift down to two shift. And that's really put, you know, a workload stress on people. And it, it, it becomes very draining um, and very problematic because when you get to those type of levels, then the chances of them being out of town and something catastrophic happen in town with no one around is very dangerous. Right. But again, you know, you can't budget for the worst case scenario. You have to take what you feel is a reasonable, you know, expectation of service. The mutual aid is there. Correct. Right. Mutual aid is so. there to back us up. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, we have a those. regional dispatch center yeah. that works with the other towns very well. So getting resources is not an issue. Okay. The problem um, with mutual aid, though, recognize that when you call mutual aid, you lose the revenue. Yeah. Right. So your guy's yeah. out sick, you're paying, taking care of him, and then plus you right. lose the revenue yeah. of the yeah. call. So, okay. you know, you try not to use it if you don't have to, but right. good point. It's, it's, um, it's a reality. But point where yeah. you have no choice. Correct. Well, that's that's point point. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I, I would say in the last, um, basically since Thanksgiving, you know, with everyone getting Omicron, it's just been crazy. Um, our overtime budget has just gone so if you look at our percentages, we're over percentage, and I'm trying to make that up by limiting, you know, and reducing some of that. Um, you know, so we're, we're trying to manage the best we can, um, and you know, you know, I, I like to throw uh, the town of uh, Southboro as an example. Population is pretty close to the same. <coughs> they have 24 full-time firefighters. Mm -hmm. We have 12. Mm -hmm. We do more 911 calls than they do. Mm -hmm. So if you looked at it per person, per, you know, per call ratio, we're doing twice the volume of calls per person than Southboro is. See, that's, so I'm a big man. <laughs> I, I will ask questions about yeah. how do you see yourself amongst, in your department, compared to somebody else? And things like that, that's the kind of thing where, right. um, you know, it it's, looks like you'll be able to do more with right. less yeah. than what some of these other towns are. No, well, that's not right. suggesting that the other towns are, are not doing things well. Right. It's just it seems that you're doing things better. And I think that that kind of um, conversation is important to be able to have whenever you start talking about, well, it's going to cost us this and this right. budget, and that's what's going on. I, I, would, I would think that what's delayed us from getting to that point, like Southboro, is we still have the 20 part-time people that are available, mm -hmm. where Southport does not. Mm -hmm. So the, the on-call part-time people have dried up in that community um, because the uh, demographic of the community has changed okay. over the years. Mm -hmm. So okay. I would say in 10 years from now, we could see our, a change start to happen here as well. Okay. And we, we've see, we're, see, we're watching it happen right now in Holden. Uh, Holden's going through the same thing that their staff, <coughs> uh, they're up to you know 26 full-time staff in Holden <coughs> now. Um, and their part-time staff, are, I think, that's down to less than 10. Um, so, you know, they're seeing a shift um, but if as that's well. An, if that's an eventuality, yep. then we should be preparing uh, the town for right. where I agree. it's going to go. I agree. And that's why for the last five years I've been asking mm -hmm. for capital plan for a new public safety or a new fire station. Mm -hmm. Because we have no place to put these people. Right. You know, we have three bedrooms for, you know, sleeping quarters. Uh, right now for our full-time staff so we can only have three people stay work the 24-hour overnight because right. we have no other place to put them right. um, we don't have a female locker room or showers so they share the men's locker room in a third of my full-time staff are female okay That's you know so there there's some logistics here we have we we try to we you know deal with you know everyone says well we just built a public safety building in 2003 
Not really. You built a police station and attached it to the fire station <laughs> and called it a public safety building. Okay. Um, because the fire station is still the original 1975 building. Right. Um, other than a mezzanine and, you know, a chief's office that's actually in the police station, nothing else was really added. Nothing was added to the fire station space. Okay. Um, so, again. Part of the capital plan. Part, part of the capital plan. So, um, so that's where we are on, on that. Uh, the last thing I have for you tonight is the public safety building line items. Um, Just real quick, the, yes. The fees that we get, you mentioned housing, fire inspection, yep. stuff like that. Are those fees locked? Can we change those fees? The so they are set by master of law. Yep. Yeah. Um, in they, they allow <coughs> you to go up to a max, and we've been at the max for 12 years. <laughs> Yep. Uh, just, yeah. Good time. Yeah. Was like, this was like a, a null and void cost. It didn't cost anything. It right. Yeah. It seems like a complete waste of time for a fire. Yeah. Uh, we, Firefighter, you go and do it. Yeah. Um, we are required to do it. We are trained to do it. Um, you know, every, every time we go into someone's house, it's fifty bucks uh, for an inspection. So we we are generating okay. almost twenty five thousand dollars a year in permit fees yeah. that go to the general fund. Um, so we there is cost coming in, um, but again, it's just. You know, there's another vehicle out running around town, you know, wearing tear on a vehicle, you know, those are the mm -hmm. things. Uh, ye years ago, we used to, the two that were on duty used to do all the inspections in the ambulance, put an additional 10,000 miles a year just doing inspections on, you know, a quarter of a million dollar piece of apparatus, <laughs> you know, so it wasn't, um, you know, prudent at that point. Um, as fire chief, I manage the budget for the public safety building line items. Mm -hmm. Sure. So I have a question on ambulance fees. What's the possibility of looking at ambulance uh, fees to be increased? We had, uh, I know you said the number is up according to this, but what's the, what's the possibility of looking at the fee, revising yep. the fees and bringing them up even more? Yep. I mean, you got you got a, looking at a million dollar just the salaries, right? Mm -hmm. And you and and what you said here with the the billing was whoops. Right here. It's five ninety. Five ninety. Five ninety. So why can't that come up higher? Well, so right now, um, the, our district eight mutual aid towns <coughs> are doing a, a survey of all the rates. Every January, <coughs> um, Medicare comes out with a new Medicare <coughs> rate structure for mm -hmm. the current year. So we take that. So what we're doing is we're gathering the data. Uh, from the surrounding towns where they're at. Um, we are 200% over Medicare rates. So we charge 200% more than Medicare. But you only get paid what you get paid. Correct. So <laughs> perfect example, we build out $1.2 million in revenue, in building, <coughs> you know, two people and insurance companies. But because Medicare will only pay the Medicare rate, and then we can only build the 20% copay on top of that to a supplemental. So what is called a contractual allowance adjustment is made. So if you ever open up a bill from your doctor's office, you'll see what they charge and what the insurance company paid. The this is different, what the adjustment is. Yeah. So we make that adjustment every single year. And I just went in front of the Board of Selectmen for last year. It was almost a half a million dollars in adjustments mm -hmm. because, you know, we can raise the rates to a million bucks. You know, or, or you know, whatever you want, but it's going to be adjusted. So we'll be writing off more adjusted. But where we can capture revenue is, again, motor vehicle accidents. Your motor vehicle insurance. You have a five thousand um, dollar medical payment option in your uh, automobile insurance. So it's first, first in, first paid. So ambulance first. Ambulance first. Yeah. So you, you have to be quicker than the hospital to bill. Okay. Um, so um, <laughs> it's, unfortunately, that's just the way it is. Um, so yes, if we raise rates, where we we're going to gather that that revenue is going to be on motor vehicle accidents. Chief, I thought the state set the rate though, maximum rate for the ambulance calls. I thought they had a maximum that you could charge regardless, don't they? No, they don't have. Nope. It. No. Um, hmm. What Medicare has done is they've gone used to before used to have a base rate. Basically, right. you get in the back of the ambulance. It was this rate. There was so much, so many dollars per mile to drive there. If they used oxygen, that was an ancillary rate. All these mm -hmm. things. It was like a menu item. Oh, you did this. You did this. You did this. That's gone away. So the, we're only allowed to build two um, uh, ICD-10 codes. So you, you basically for medical billing, you can only bill for two. 
So what we've done is we've bundled the base rate to incorporate all those other charges. Are that's the rate in our mileage rate. So we've we've um, basically blocked them together. So if you get in back of an ambulance, you have a, a you know cardiac issue. Even though we may not do everything that would be in the old menu, we're billing for the whole thing because we may have to do it, and we're we're, we're trained to that level to provide it. Where um, before you you know you would just so now it's a little changed. So um, can we adjust that? And again, it'll come back to what the survey is, because we bill what is called reasonable and customary, mm -hmm. and that's what your billing is. Is you want to be able to justify and say, you know. Hey, our surrounding towns, this is what it costs for service. Right. We're trying to, you know, recuperate as best we can. This is what we feel is reasonable, customary, um, and appropriate. Right. So, you know, I, again, um, we do the best we can. I think if, if the budget could show the line, you know, fire ambulance minus revenue, you would see that the town's only spending seven hundred thousand dollars to support fire and ambulance services for mm -hmm. the town you know, that's what's coming from the tr technically coming what's coming from the tax levy you know so it is a s considerably small number compared to a 24 million dollar budget um so but you don't get to do that I, exactly <laughs> so but i have so what you said to you i see yeah because you're at 200 percent of medicare but are there other towns Around or in other towns in the state that are that are higher than that number? Yes. Oh well, yeah. There's yes, absolutely. Right. Yep. There are quite a few yes, that absolutely. are higher. Yes, absolutely. Yep. It yep. can go higher. Yes. There yeah, are yeah, yeah. Yeah. obvious yeah. other ways that yeah. they're getting more revenue, right. and yeah, obviously, yeah. the private ambulance services aren't losing money; they're making right. money, absolutely. so they're charging yep. higher rates too. Yep. So. Absolutely. But if you do increase it, I mean, you, <coughs> I mean, technically, you're not going to get it right. You're just billing more. You, you so want to get it back. Them, yeah. Yeah, I mean, say, say we raise it 20%, we right. may only capture 4 or 5% of that. Yeah. You know, uh, but again, that's 4 or 5%. Right. And, you know, yeah, it is something. It. But, you know, it, the whole, but. It, as Tommy's saying, the whole justification is it's 20% re increase. You're falling 16% behind. I know. So. Right. Yep. Okay. Yeah. No, you should look at the other way. You're coming out 4 or 5% more. That's what right, true. That's what yes, doing. exactly. Yes. You're yeah, but he's not. Yeah, yeah. But I don't think he's he's billing for the cost. He's two hundred percent. But if he goes up in more, it's it's going to be the cut of the cost that he's incurring. So if he's he's going to get more, but it's still not going to be enough. Right. It's it'll, just it'll never be enough. Hold deeper. Yeah, it'll it's, never be enough. It isn't enough now. So yes. Yeah. 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 We're ahead. Right. Exactly. Yes. Um, you know. I, I, again. Um, the ambulance service it was never designed to be looked at as a revenue, a revenue generator. Um, it, it's a, it's a fee for service, right. and, and we recover as as much as we right. can. And it's a service we provide the community. Um, and it is cheaper than hiring a private service to come in and provide the service for us um, because they do dual roles. If you were to take the cost centers and really divide them out to the full-time staff does 60% ambulance. So if I took 60% of the ambulance wages and put it on the ambulance side and 40% on the fire side, then you could basically gen you could <coughs> show that the ambulance budget is more in line with what the revenue is. Right. But it's just we, our cost centers are on, right. off, off balance, so. But, any more questions? Did you finish your public safety yep. building? Public you started, I don't sorry, think you ever finished. Sorry. Public safety building. Um, Seth, I hate to be rude. Sure. Okay. So you're no, almost oh, at the end anyway you. for this. Um, I see you guys. You all set up there. What's that? You all set outside. Um, you got a bit at the run Yep. I just like. Um, but he's going to bill at two hundred percent. You know. <laughs> oh yeah, it's going to be more than that. Um, Seth, are you going to go over your capital? I can. At some point, maybe when I get back. Sure. Yeah, you I'll go. Over the public safety billing is really not a big change. As far as expenses. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll be back in just a minute. Okay. But I'd like where is that tab? Full, more to the front? I don't know where it's tabbed in the book. Uh, There's a buildings tab, but I didn't see yours in that buildings tab. That's what I was puzzled by. So if you look at my proposal, it should be in my proposal. It's in your proposal. It's I the don't very don't last page of the proposal. It will be in the total budget, but I don't know that it's in your budget in the buildings tab. For your building. It's on the on summary. Is 
you said the building tab, but you're not on the building tab. You are. No, because I'm, I'm five. I'm oh, zero, yeah, zero in, five. Yeah, you're in the budget, but yeah. I don't know. You're in the total budget dollars, yeah. Yeah. but you're not in the building tab for some reason. So it's actually in my budget. Like it looks like this. It's expensive. Don't bother. Yeah. <laughs> then you gotta rip it apart. Yeah. Yeah. You, I, I'm on version three, so this thing's coming apart a few times. So. <laughs> version three? Is that what it's That's what I'm on, yeah. That's this one. We're looking at this yes, one. yes. Here's the billing tip. Perfect. Okay, exactly. Let's see if there's a billing tip. That should be in there. Yep. Um, I think it came on level anyway. I don't know about you. Yeah, so, so it's been level. basically level funded. Yeah, all it, the buildings have been level funded. Yeah, and, and again, um, our, our biggest issue, um, this really kind of breaks it out to you know where the expenses are and what we cover. Um, basically, we have enough money to keep the lights on, to keep the heat on. Um, there's no major <clears throat> repairs done on the building. Um, you know, several years ago, I had money left over in the fire department uh, account I had it transferred by the Board of Selectmen so I could paint the outside of the building. Mm -hmm. um, so we did that. Um, if anyone's driven by and seen the cupola on top of the, of the building, one whole side of it, all the louvers are gone. And the other side is, is boarded up because those louvers are gone. Um, so uh, again, our building is no different than every other building that is lacking need of, of repair. Um, one mm -hmm. item that I may be coming forward with you guys very shortly, um, to address is so we have a uh, very large generator that powers the entire building we have service contracts um, uh, to work on the building to uh, come quarterly to make sure everything's running uh, it automatically starts every Wednesday it runs for an hour uh, everyone thought everything's great the service guy came out and says yeah you got a big problem and the master uh, 300 amp breaker that provides the power to the building was tripped he says you need to call an electrician Call electrician. Electrician comes out. There's a dead short in the line from the generator to the transfer switch it in the pillars. Nice. So, what they think is is where the trench of the line was over time has settled, mm -hmm. and the plastic conduit is broke. Water has gone into the line, and has deteriorated the insulation on the line. And the two lines have the three lines have shorted together. In so constant. Conduit only is good from 1976. No, this, this is 2003. This, this, oh, okay. Yeah, okay. She's talking, she's yeah. saying yeah. the yeah. line, the conduit is underneath the parking lot. Yes, under the parking lot. It has line. to be dug yes. up oh. and fixed, and yes. it's a big it issue. Yeah. So um, they're coming don't up worry. with. It can look like Palm Augusta. Don't worry. It'll <laughs> yeah. be fine. Yeah. Um, Just so, one big so, yeah. so, so there may be a uh, uh, reserve fund transfer request, or you know, maybe yeah. we'll talk yeah. to Dan yeah. Deficit, spend it, yeah. and fix it with free cash. I don't know. We'll figure it out. We've got to figure that out. But it's got to get fixed. Um, but our, our biggest two issues on the public safety building is electricity cost is going through the roof. Yeah. It's just, and that's just everyone's household is seeing that. Uh, and the price of heating oil is going through the roof. <coughs> so we're seeing that as well. Um, and that's where our two biggest impact of um, costs are associated with. Do you have AC? Building. Yes, we have AC. Okay. Yeah. That's kind of reason the And I'm allowed to turn it on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. Um, Open the door. And, and, and again, um, this building obviously is fully staffed 24 hours a day. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it has the most full time staff at any point at, during the day being utilized. So it's used every single day. Um, so, you know, little things like fixing, you know, exterior doorknobs, um, it, it becomes, you know, you would think you just be able to go and just have money to fix it but we it, it, it comes to you well, know you had that problem what, where one of the prisoners did some damage to something and you had a yes yeah, so that was we had, we had we have prisoner cells <laughs> a prisoner got a little rowdy busted the sprinkler head in the cell oh, flooded the <coughs> cell um and caused 1900 dollars worth of damage so that was in july so that came out of my budget in sure, july he had plenty of money during oh absolutely yeah. it, it was added to his uh criminal uh yeah, subpoena yeah. that you know for restitution yeah so well he's yeah. going to get yeah going so to see we'll never see that or yeah. we'll That's definitely not see it in this fiscal year <coughs> Come um, clean water or black water it was bad it was bad it was they, bad they usually excited when they go <coughs> yeah um it was yeah 
Yes, yes. It, 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 it was gross. Nasty. Yeah, it was gross. Just plain nasty. Yep. Um, Good. So that's been repaired. Uh, we had a compressor fail on the air conditioning units on the fire department side, not the police side. Um, that was repaired early this this year as yeah. well. I notified you guys on yeah. that. I, I'm not in, you know, dire straits yet. Um, we just had an oil delivery today. Hopefully that will get us through this year. I'll tell RJ McDonald <coughs> to stop delivering. Fill me up in July. <laughs> one of those deals. Um, but you know, again, we're doing the best we can um, to keep that building. Keep done. the building at 55. It's fine. Yeah. Uh, we just had uh, weather stripping done through the Green Communities Program, so the entire building was weatherized. Um, so that that should help, um, you know, the rest of this heating season and uh, next as well. Um, that's really it for the public safety building. Um, again, those are the two biggest ones. The other one that you know we never really thought of when we raised water and sewer rates. Well, guess what? All the public buildings pay water and sewer as well, so those rates went up as well. So. Um, what the town hall that? Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, Just across the path. Um, and to update on the trash, um, yeah. uh, <coughs> Board of Health is working on getting that finalized now. Mm -hmm. uh, so we should have potential a pro, you know, request for proposals from other vendors nice. to come up with uh, a future plan nice. uh, for that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, okay, you want to go capital plan? Real quick, I'll yes. breeze through that real um, quick. I, yes, but, uh, yeah. To the next page, Dan. Yeah. yeah, so form A is the inventory list. Mm -hmm. Okay, that lists every um, <coughs> significant item um, of $10,000 or more that the department owns um, and what the replacement cost is and what the targeted uh, replacement year would be. Um, every year you're going to see th these numbers change because the cost of uh, fire apparatus is just <laughs> getting out of control. Um, so that kind of gives you an idea. Um, all right. So the, obviously the first one is the uh, fire department air compressor. Uh, the current air compressor we have was purchased in 99 when we got those SCBAs, right? Yeah. Um, the problem is, is the brand that we have, um, Poland just went through the same thing two years ago. They no longer can get parts for it. Um, so they're scavenging um, used parts uh, to keep this thing going. It has not failed on us, um, but it's we, this could be a problem. Um, I did apply for a federal grant to replace it for $95,000. Uh, we should hear back by September whether that's awarded or not. So. Um, when I was acting chief in OCAM, I applied for, for the exact same grant, and they got it. And I just basically took the same narrative and just docked it up and just resent. So I redo everything. Yeah, exactly. Don't so. fix what's not broken. Exactly. So, um, <coughs> so um, <coughs> that's the first one. Um, ladder truck. Uh, ladder truck's coming up on 23 years old. Um, again. When the ladder was purchased in 99, the type of buildings in town was a little different. Um, we didn't have the commercial property, gas station, center tree, bar and grill. We didn't have that mm -hmm. uh, apartment complex above it. Um, we didn't have some of these other buildings. Um, I can show you some pictures of several house fires we've had over the last several years. It's not, you know, everyone says, well, why do you need a 100 foot ladder truck? I said, well, you don't have any 100 foot buildings. I said, it's not that we need the height. We need to be able to reach it because everyone builds so far off the road edge and we can't get the ladder close enough to it that we have to reach for it. Uh, we found this to be problematic uh, when we had the fire at Countryside three years ago. Uh, we had to rescue people off the third floor because they were trapped in the building. And because of the, the, um, the way they set back off their driveways and parked cars, we couldn't reach um, all the way. We couldn't reach to the roof. Uh, so Holden had to get to the roof. We had we were able to get to the uh, balconies, um, but it became problematic. Um, so those are the type of things that you have to be aware of when you're responding to a you know fire. Is proper positioning of the apparatus. You got to make sure you leave space in order to be able to get uh, adequate. Um, again, uh, I'm not saying the truck is in catastrophic failure or anything like that. Other than it's been in an accident recently, which is getting repaired. Um, that's
that's another mm -hmm. story for another day. Um, so w this is becoming a maintenance money <laughs> money pit for us. Um, right. Every year we're probably spending almost uh, eight to ten thousand dollars in repairs on this truck. Um, one, obviously, it's the age, <clears throat> and two, it's corrosion. Um, the it's a stainless steel body, which is great. Body's in beautiful shape, you know, nice and shiny, looks great. But it's hung <coughs> off the frame <coughs> of the truck with steel understructure. Yeah, it'll <laughs> go. Um, so we're just hoping the body doesn't, the cabs don't, cabinets don't fall off the truck. Um, <laughs> so there's been some repairs to that done. Um, we've had to replace um, uh, airlines, air tanks underneath, just because corrosion. Um, it's just been, you know, nonstop, you know, chasing things. Um, all the hydraulic hoses, we've been chasing hydraulic leaks and replacing hydraulic hoses because the fittings are rusted and failed. Um, so, again, it's just, you know, it's I'm 23. Years. It's 23 years old. <laughs> so, um, so it goes to your house tonight. Yeah. Well, maybe not. I don't know if it's going right anymore. No, it's not going right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> no. Do we have a ladder in town? We do not have a ladder in town. This is our only ladder truck we have. Okay. So, uh, we're relying on mutual aid right now uh, for the next several weeks. So. Um, obviously, yeah, this, this lad is in town. The <laughs> lad is on the other truck. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. A little smaller, but yeah. There's yeah we have a ladder yeah. that looks like that first picture in town right now. <laughs> <laughs> I guess <laughs> my question, I'm sorry, I didn't clarify. Obviously, the last several years, we've been putting in the um, construction renovation of the public safety or the fire station. Um, again, this would be a, a very large bond package and really uh, that's a three to five year project uh, of planning and getting everything in place. Um, but there would be seed money for architectural design and study and um, all that that would be needed first. So is that a realistic, this is stick on this page just for half a second. Yep. So we're, we're thinking, um, in 2025 yep. budget, we're yep. going to be ready to go. If we had money to design and get an edit this year, this year, it, it would be in the same location. Or <clears throat> you can move it? I don't know. Okay, I, I don't know what the best solution of that building is. I mean, if you really drill down to the the bones of that building, you, the thing is so structurally there's so much steel in that building, it is overly built. Um, so, could you add on to the the rear of it with with space? Could you, you know, add on to the wood studio side and expand that way? Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the, who knows? I mean, someone would have to really determine, you know, okay. space space needs analysis to really what's the best option. Tear the whole thing down and, and you build a new one there. Uh, or is a second station down by four corners on the west side of town another option? Usually, usually you bring in a consultant. And yeah, so. And, and, that's, that's, and I understand yeah. that's probably the best thing. I can't answer that question. But the whole but. idea of it, it being a central Correct. spot. Right. Um, and you do have all those areas out there yep. now right. more so than you yeah, Absolutely. Yep. And one. it's only going to get, yeah. the growth is going to be that side of town. Right. So it's so clear. If, if you had your druthers, would you rather have a, a second station or would you rather have this one be, you know, refurbished? I think <clears throat> my feeling is is it all depends on the growth of the town. Um, would we get better ISO rating if we had a second fire station on that side of town? Yes, because it's all based on mileage uh, mm -hmm. to the fire station. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if we could support currently right now, 10 years from now maybe, but right now we couldn't support full-time staff in both stations. We don't have, we can't do that. Okay. Um, you your biggest problem, not biggest problem, right. but one of your biggest problems yes. is housing full-time Correct, staff. right. Our biggest issue is housing full-time staff so now. would you house, if that were the case, <coughs> excuse me, would you house ambulance services out of that, uh, that second? No, you can't because they do the dual role. Okay. Yeah. The other option is maybe build a new police station and the fire department takes over the whole public safety building. Mm -hmm. Sure. You know, I mean, that, that could be, you know, potential and utilize that office space down there, finish the upstairs of the attic, you know, for, you know, dormitories and stuff like that. You know, so there are some options. So is that start so. taking Nick up to dinner. Yeah. <laughs> so, answer your question? It does. Okay. All right. Um, well, let's see. Uh, Chief's vehicle is proposed in 25. Uh, again. Um, 
this was purchased through a grant, so the town did not purchase this current one. Uh, so this was not. Um, the last chief's vehicle bought brand new was in 97, which was yours. Um, so this <laughs> Your new truck? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so a again, we've done with used, used vehicles or grant-funded vehicles since 97, so the town really hasn't um, worked on that. Okay, keep working on the grants. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, cardiac monitors in 26. Um, that would be we replace three of them. Um, our CPR machines, uh, we currently have three of those as well. Can, can I just ask for a question? Sure. On, on the on the monitors. Yep. That you would do those three at the you would do those all at the same time. They're all purchased at the same time, so they all have to. Oh, yes, okay. they were all purchased. So the life expect. I mean, the problem is is that we would have to start replacing one really early before failure or before end of life you yeah. know so i don't know if it's worth doing that oh, okay. and not get the benefit of you know so well plus then you keep them all the same too yeah, so, so they're, they're all identical they're right. you know no change different buttons yep. okay. uh cpr machines we currently have three of those uh, again we got grant funding um this was a capital item um two years ago we were able to get uh, acquire one through grant uh, so that's been taken care of and that's why it's pushed out to 26. I'll be retired by then. Mm -hmm. um, so you think. Yeah, oh right. yes. Um, uh, Ambulance One, which is a 2013, um, would come off in uh, FY27. Um, obviously, you know we, we operate three ambulances. So when we took over OCAM, we acquired. They gifted us their 2008 ambulance. It wasn't a great gift, but they gifted it to us. Um, so by getting that. In taking over that town, that leveraged us to apply for the federal grant to replace that one because of the age of the vehicle. So what's going to happen um, this coming summer when the new vehicle comes in is the 2008 is going to be gifted back to the town of Ocam uh, because we because we received federal funding and we said the vehicle is not worthy to be an ambulance anymore. We can't trade it in as an ambulance. Uh, so OCAM's going to use it as their rescue truck to replace their 1994 rescue truck. So it's it's a win for them. Sure. Um, our oldest 2013 is going to move to OCAM, and the two newest ones will be here. Um, so that that's the the plan is that they'll rotate through, and then we, what we do is we rotate them um, as needed to keep the mileage down and, and spread them out okay. uh, as well. Uh, we've hired the EMS staff in OCAM. So the EMS people that they had in Okim that live in Okim, they are Rutland employees. Mm -hmm. So they staff that ambulance if they're available, and then we come over and we back them up. Mm -hmm. And then our paramedic will get on their, that ambulance. Those people will go, and then our ambulance comes back. Uh, so that's how it's been working. Um, uh, car 2, which is our uh, F-350 pickup truck. Um, this is basically... The on-duty uh, shift commander um, rides in this vehicle around town, so they support uh, ambulance activities. So <coughs> the ambulance goes on a call. The third person, the officer on duty, takes this vehicle uh, to help with lifting patients, carrying patients out, out of the house. This, by having the third person there, has eliminated uh, back injuries. We haven't had a back injury in three years uh, since we've implemented this, so it's been very pr pr uh, a good program that we've done. This vehicle's used... Um, at um, basically picks up all the hose, everything at, at, at a fire that basically is dirty, everything is put in the back. It's used as a utility vehicle to bring it, uh, everything back. This vehicle is also used to go out on daily uh, inspections, do all the inspections throughout town. So that's why you see it all over town uh, and it's used daily. And that's in 28. And the last one would be our uh, SCBA uh, breathing apparatus. Last time the town bought this was in two, uh, 1999. Uh, we replaced those units in 2013 with a $280,000 federal grant. Um, so that was covered by a grant. Uh, these have a 15 year life expectancy uh, per the manufacturer. Uh, so that's why it comes out on 28. So. Mm -hmm. you update? Did you give all that? Capital plan has all this. Yes. Yeah. yeah, they have all this. Just to make sure. Yep. So. Um, Again, as things change and as, um, you know, 
I just don't want to get into the position, you know, that we've seen over the years is if we don't um, address the things now, everything is just going to stack up and to, you know, every, everything's just going to come together um, and be a problem. Uh, I w I'm very happy over the last uh, three or four years that the capital requests that have been in front of the capital planning, I've been able to acquire grant funding to knock them off and allow funding to go elsewhere in the town. Uh, so we've been very um, effective in getting that done. Uh, so it's worked out very well. I think they're going to have to push a little ladder truck, though. <coughs> I applied this year, so we'll see. Okay. We'll see. So risk is obviously biggest. risk is a big issue. Anytime that you have what you have, and you have it when you need it, it's great. Right. But when you don't have it, yep. it becomes a, a risk. Yep. And when the risk comes a liability. Correct. And that becomes, I think, as much as anything, because everybody has this um, the concern about, well, government is always looking to be able to just increase spending right. and yep. it goes out of control. <clears throat> but they don't see the other side of it that says, it's them, it's us, the right. citizens that are asking for that particular type of support and what the risk is if it's not there for us. So right. I, I, I don't know how it gets done. I know Ron is putting together the plans for the, the capital needs, um, but it really does become a matter of uh, risk benefit. Right, absolutely, yep, yep. So. Yeah, um, and the amount of money we invest in the fire service directly impacts, um, it trickles down to the home based, based specifically in your homeowner's right. insurance policy. Right. That's where the, where the true number is. Right. And if you broke out your tax bill of what percentage of your tax bill is you pay for the fire and ambulance service, it's still less than what you pay for your homeowner's insurance. Exactly. You know, so it, it, it's, you know, it's one of those things. It, it's, you know, so the, the more money you invest in the fire service, the lower your homeowner's insurance goes. So okay. it, it, it is... Um, yeah, there's a direct correlation between the two. So Have been able to find any grants for the study for the fire station? No, and the only place I can think of going for that is in the infrastructure bill that's through Congress is to try to get our local um, uh, folks. folks to, you know, uh, McGovern's office and them to really you know, yeah. help drive some of that, um, you know, and, and true needs. Uh, and need to really be squeaky so there. when right. would you, Chief, when would you expect to hear something about the grant for a ladder truck? September. All grant fundings based on their fiscal count, uh, federal fiscal year, which is September 1st. So anything that's currently pending now has to be awarded <coughs> by <coughs> September 1st. Um, so, so I'm seeing two... And a half, yeah, two point and two and a half million dollars. If you take the SCBAs, if that one doesn't get it, and things like that, of capital expenses. Yeah, but I'm not the only one in line either. Well, yeah, let's, so. let's, let's, I'll, I'll, I'll briefly talk about that. Yeah. Right? So, well, I was gonna, you, you, I was getting you, I was gonna ask you, <laughs> I was getting you, how do you expect a, this? I know there's a bunch of them, right? And we yeah. know that. Yep. And have, have you been able to? And, and this isn't for Seth. I guess this is yeah. for after Seth leaves. But you got a got a plan? Yes. Okay. And I, and well, if he can get some well, grants, it's marvelous. Yeah, the the I question mean. is the, the question more is short term and long term is right. the problem, right? right? So the capital improvement committee now has a five year capital plan that really deals mostly with like equipment kinds of stuff. They also now have a, a, a ten year facility management plan to look at all the buildings. That's all been completed now. So they have both of those two. And in the latest stage, the third stage of that is they now have what's called a pavement management plan to look at roads. So our capital improvement committee for the first time in God knows how long actually has plans and when things need to be changed and replaced. They have all the information they need. Right now, Becky has sent to them letting them know that some of our debt service payments from the past are going to be falling off over the next two years or so, right? Mm -hmm. So you have old debt that's falling off. What you want to do is you want to set up a bond package for new repairs so that the debt doesn't fall off and then you have a big spike in interest because <coughs> you want to level it off, right? So the problem is, is that, as he says, uh, almost every building in town has major repair needs. The town has not maintained the buildings like they should. so. You know, in, in the parking lots, for instance, if you go in any of the town parking lots, all of them are shot, including the school parking lots, right? So you're talking about 
well over a million dollars just to deal with the, the parking Whoa. lot issues, right? Mm -hmm. School and town, right? Because every parking lot is bad. Then you got, you know, things like um, the siding on the library is shot, the windows are shot, the same thing is true in the, in the community center are all shot. So there's a whole list of building repairs that we need to do. So that is one of the things that I want to work with the Capital Improvement Committee to put together a package for a bond package to level it off. That's not even talking about the ladder truck. So let's say that bond package, and I'm just throwing a number out there, is a couple of million dollars to do what we're talking about. And that, that doesn't include the fire station. That doesn't include the fire station, the fire station, the fire nothing. So. Yeah. The problem we have here is the needs are much bigger than the ability to pay right now is, is the problem. And a lot of this work, in my opinion, probably should have been done a long time ago in, in bond packages and stuff. So, you know, we're going to have to, I mean, it would be great if we got the truck through a grant, but who knows, right? So, you know, the, the first step, and I've said to the Capital Improvement Committee, I met with them and said, you guys got to start developing that bond package, whatever it is, so that we can bring it forward, because that's got to go to a public referendum. The people have to vote on the bond package, right? Because it's debt service and it's large. Mm -hmm. What that package looks like, I, I can tell you some things that I would be recommending, like, you know, fixing the community center siding and, and the library and all that stuff. Um, but like I say, we're going to have to decide what our short-term priorities are, what buildings have to be fixed first, and then look at longer-term things. But Well, you have that with the roads. I mean, you do have... The roads now graded as to which are good. And right. Well, we, really we do have that's what the payment management plan did. Exactly. We evaluated all the roads and graded them and said which ones get repaired first. But most of those repairs are going to be done through Chapter 90, which is nothing. I mean, you can do very little work. The good news is some of the state roads here, the state's going to come in and do some major repairs to 56 and yeah. whatever the other major state 68. road. Was it? 68. 68. 68. Yeah. So the state's going to come in and do those roads, which will help a lot. So, you know, we're also working on, you know, part of Pomagusset putting in the new sewer stuff there and, and the new water stuff there and, and the road there. We got sidewalks going on Maple Hill. So Joe's got more projects than, frankly, Joe can handle, but there's so many needs that I don't know what the long-term solution, because we're talking millions of dollars for a fire station. That's, that's I don't know. I know in Southridge it was $25 million. I don't know what you're talking about for, for here, but we'd have to see what the, what the oh, feasibility study is. I asked him for a new building. No, you have a guest room. At your house? <laughs> oh, a guest room, yes, absolutely. Okay, there we go. We'll give you three dollars a year to rent. I you to get paid for using my truck. What's going in there, Fireman? <laughs> what, what are you putting in there? I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> So the answer is to I mean, I see, I see two concerns. I mean, and we're going to see a lot of concerns, big concerns by different departments all the way through yeah. this yes. process. So everybody in the committee knows the new, the, the, the uh, new members that we're going to see these. But I mean, there's, you know, the ladder truck is 23 years old. And I don't think there's anybody in the room here that if you, if you added up all our vehicles' ages, they don't equal 25 years old. So we got to think about the ladder truck. You know, and, and then we got to think about this station. We, we're housing one third of the staff was there is women, and we don't give the women a place to be shower, a shower yeah. privately. No, you're right. It's and a I mean, liability you know, like you can't even imagine. Because the first time it, someone walks in there and it goes bad, it's going to go real bad. Risk, risk, risk reward. But the good thing is that they have the information for a plan. Which is they've never had before. So well, they, they, no, they've no, got. We've got to, we've got to got think that these <coughs> things are. These, the Capital Planning Committee, and they're out there in Cyberland, got to realize that it's coming. And it's going to have to happen. I well, don't but, know where we're gonna, how we're going to fund it. And, and well, as Ron had said, it be, if it becomes a uh, bond issue, then it has to go to the, right. uh, in front of the people. And they have to vote on it. So to get to that point, we're, we're going to have to have somebody give a pretty good discussion as to why this is well, really truth, important. Truthfully, there's a big difference of, of putting together a two million bond package to take care of, you know, the the, the, um, the parking lots and, and the maybe some siding and things for buildings. That's a big difference in, right. you know, a fire station, which you're yeah. talking 25 or yeah. 20 million on, it's, it's a totally different mm -hmm. deal. So the first thing we'll be working on is to try to get, we need to get all of our current buildings up to speed and just get them. Well, I think we need to study the fire stations and <coughs> what our number is going to be in a few Well, years. that's, that's, yeah, I mean, that, that's a $30,000 study, 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 probably study. even. A, it's a million yeah. dollar study. It's a million dollars million. for the study. Right. For the million dollars for the study. In plans? With plans? In oh, you mean the detail plans? design. Yeah, detail I mean, design, yeah. You, yeah. yeah, you do it in <coughs> stages, yeah. but you usually yeah. do the feasibility study first and you get yeah. the basics, and then later on you go to a, a more detailed design, then eventually to construction documents, but 
it's it's over stages. I mean, well, it's coming. <laughs> Everything is coming. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, town hall, senior center, all all these things. I don't lot. think you can handle. I don't think you got enough back in to handle a lawsuit if someone walks into the ladies room over there and they're taking a shower. So risk reward, risk reward. I, I don't even want to talk about thing. the the potential liability from the billing maintenance. Well, that that's, well, that's where I'm going. But, but so that's why... That's so why saying I'm, it's coming, we've got to act So soon. So let's let's be clear, right? In, in the year I've been here, that was why it was so important last year to utilize the free cash to do a lot of repairs that we did, right? So mm -hmm. we now have a plan and money to, to redo the roof of the senior center, which is community center, which is w overdue for for repairing that roof, that's huge. The same thing is true. We just did half of the roof at the Woods Building, which should have been replaced four years ago. Uh, we fixed it. We're fixing in the free cash. We're doing the heater exchanges in the in library and redoing all those. Plus fixing the roofing problems in the library. We just <coughs> had to replace the boiler. So you know we did those go to bid yet? By the way, which things? The he boiler and the heat. The yeah, he's put them out already, and he's got he chose a company already, so that's going up in the spring. They're going in the spring, okay. so so there's a lot of work that that's moving forward that had not moved forward for years because will that's, be completed in this fiscal year. Th which one? The, the work to this building. Mm, no. Some of it would be, some of it will not. Like I think the um, well, we're talking about July, so I would say the heating exchanges probably at the library will probably be done. The roof at this community center will not be. Uh, we have to look at one of the things we're going to have to figure out is where we're going to get money to do the back side of the roof for the woods building. Because okay. we, we did the front side, we stopped the water problems, but the back side still needs a roof. So, and, and the cost of construction right now is just ridiculously skyrocketing for any kind of repairs or building construction. So, so a host of issues there. Even even with the, we got, I think it was 25 grand I got from the, from uh, Gobi and Ferguson. I asked them for money for the woods building roof. That 25 grand only covered the front half of the roof because the construction prices on roofing is almost tripled. It's, it's just ridiculous. Because mm -hmm. they have so much construction work out there. Nobody wants to do those jobs. So they basically bid high and, well, and you either cost go for it or you don't. Cost uh, itself is high. <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's just, it's a joke what's going on now. Um, so. You know, but because we also need to prioritize mm -hmm. so that we're spending money on public buildings where the public well, meeting rooms are used. The right. Woodhouse is closed right. except so, to the historical society. So there's no public meeting rooms right. in but, there. But the key, what we've focused on first is, is securing the structures, the roofs and things to secure from water going in and damaging the structure. So we've really focused on the exterior structure to make sure that we don't have major damages. That that because well, if you leave the roof leaking, the whole building's going to eventually go. So in this building, in this building right. is used. That's why heavily. we're fixing the roof here and here. It changes. We're not fixing the siding or the windows because you got to fix the shell and you know we we're doing the best we can with the money. But the roofs are first. Windows and siding will be next, and and then eventually we can get inside the buildings for the the inside needs. But that's the me and Joe have spent a lot of time, you know, going to the capital improvement committee using the facility management plan that I had done to come forward with a plan to, to deal with the shell of the building. So we're on the right path, but, you know, we're, even though we spent hundreds of thousands of dollars, it's just, it's stick just to starting. <laughs> yeah. just gotta just starting. Well, where I'm going with this is, and why I asked if it was going to be done in this fiscal year, I had a, a member of the community come up to me and ask me, you guys needed all that money to do yeah. these things that are going to be done in this fiscal year. Yeah. And I said, I, I don't know the answer. I think, I think, a number of these projects are going to be started in the fiscal year. I'm not sure they're going to be finished in the fiscal year. For instance, the roof that they're, the work they're going to be doing on the roof of the library, I'm sure that'll probably be started. I just don't know that it'll finish by because you're talking by June 30th, right? right? So I don't know if it'll all be finished, but a lot of it will be started. Huh. So we have to do on the, on the community center roof. We have to do engineering work before we even start on the building. Okay, if we're going to stop the capital. This, <coughs> this can go a long time. Yeah. Yeah. So. I reserve the right to call you back if we need you. Absolutely. But thank you Happy very to much come. for your time. And he's going to be able to help us out with that information. That yes. Yes, he's going to yep. get that. But thank you very much for coming. Thanks, thank you for having me. Good job. Sure. Good job. Sure. Thank, thank you. <laughs> okay. So everyone has now received the book and seen all the different tabs of all the different things we have to do. So do we want to do one night a week where we do marathon meetings, or do we want to do twice a week where we do shorter meetings? Tamika is not available on Tuesdays as she has other, other committees that she sits on. We can do, I found out just yesterday, 
we can do Saturdays or Fridays too. Absolutely. <laughs> Good luck. Yeah. Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> Have a nice meeting. Yeah. Uh, listen, I'm with you. Well, I just found that out yesterday. I didn't realize that Saturday was a choice. I think it's, it's a great idea. Good <laughs> option. <laughs> um, so, so we're we talking about those. Wednesday and Thursday, right? Well, Tamika's not available on Tuesday, so unless Darren wants to take all the notes. Um, I think that we should. I wouldn't mind if we did it two nights in a row, to Wednesday and Thursday, um, and just knocked it off if possible, and just go through it that way. Um, it, it would it would help with a couple things. I don't necessarily want to go back to back, but we get it done, okay. and we're and we're done. Yeah, um, I'm good for that too. And, and how about you, Alex? Fine. It's okay with you? Yeah. I know you're not available on Wednesdays. Well, I, some nights I am, but it's not. I have other things that I've always been doing on Wednesdays no, that and, I and, and, to go to. So. I get it. Um, well, as long as we have a quorum. As long as we have a quorum. I don't want to. Yeah, but I don't want to miss the information. I would. I like to see us if we do Thursdays and do a little bit longer meeting, but not. I don't. I'm not saying marathon meeting. I'm saying. Not well, you figure half an hour, 45 minutes. It's something 8 o'clock, and we haven't even gotten to the last three things in ours. Right. And we just saw one department. Yeah, but you probably saw the most complicated department. Dispatch is going to be complicated, but this is, in dispatch, my mind, the police. DPW, the dispatch and the police. Yeah, DPW, yeah, DPW big ones, right? Yeah, no, dispatch, DPW. We got, we got the school, right, that we're going to do? Yeah. Well, that's not complicated. <laughs> They're not going to listen anyway. <laughs> um, well, we don't, you know. So. Point. If that's acceptable to everyone, then I will work with Tamika and we'll get it squared away so that we're meeting Wednesdays and Thursdays. That's cool. Well, if, if, if that works for a couple of them, for our big agenda nights, yeah. and we would do that, right. I would be, and then go to one right, longer exactly. meeting when we need it, right. and if we need to go the other way. I mean, let's, right. let's and all that's work be together flexible. to get through this. Well, that's <coughs> and exactly, but we got to... But we gotta go. We, we gotta can't. start finding rooms to meet in. That's the issue, too. Oh, I know, oh. but not until March 1st. <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> so we are going to be able to meet in a small conference room. Oh, good. We well, we were. Yes. Oh, perfect. So we've got that. So um, I just want to make sure that everybody's acceptable, so we'll work to get that all squared away. And, I mean, ultimately, there are going to be some nights where it won't be that bad. Right. But the bigger departments, we tend to a little bit longer. Yeah. Um, everyone saw the presentation that we received from Wachusa Regional School District? Didn't give a whole heck of a lot of information. Much, yeah. Yeah. Right. So um, I would like to see us all, if this is not me, this is a, a throwing it out there, I'd like to say that if we don't get a detailed dollars and cents by Tuesday that we push them off. Tuesday before the 17th, right? Was that? Oh, that's actually that's coming next up. Week. That's, that's next, next week. week. Yeah, that's faster. Yeah. So well, you were saying by next Tuesday we should. By next Tuesday, if we don't have if we don't have the the program uh, the details from them, it doesn't do us any good getting it that morning or that right. afternoon like right. we've done many times, and then they sit there and you're trying to. It does. Ask it, it, even when we get it at a time, it's a. <coughs> so it's so it's how do we want to speak? How do we want to phrase that? I mean, because we could say not next week, we'll push it off, but push it off one to win, and then what happens if they don't hit the push off date? Um, they've rescheduled already so, twice on this. So, so right now, because if you remember, with, it was supposed to be with, the third, then it moved to tonight, and right. then we got I, bounced. Uh, you know. I met with Holden and Princeton today, the managers of the town, and we're right now of the three towns, those three towns were first. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I don't know what Paxson, what's happening with Paxson yet, or even Sterling, but when they do the first town, they're going to have to have the numbers for all the towns. So, well, if those, so if those dates are before ours, we'll get the numbers before that. I could check tomorrow and find out with the school system what's going on. Um, I expect that they'll have it by, by next Tuesday, and I'll make it clear that we need it by next Tuesday. Well, that's, that's so we have it. I know myself, I don't need <coughs> it when we get it yeah. 10 minutes before we walk in, or when uh, they walk in. The point. We if we get it next Tuesday, it should be the following week. Well, if we get it next Tuesday, then we could do it that Thursday, because it's already scheduled for next two, next Thursday. It's already scheduled. Now, are we asking the school committee members to be come here in. also? Um, they don't come in. They've never come we in. We can. Past. 
Well, Ask them time. to join us if we'd like. But well, what, isn't it normally the superintendent and, and staff, the business yeah. manager? That's who does the presentation. And in previous years, as you know, we have had school committee members join, and it just kind of depends upon how involved they want to be. Yeah. Right. But I guess my point is, we sit here and listen to the school. We, they listen to what we say. They never, not all. I shouldn't say never. They usually don't get back with the information we ask for or get us whatever we're looking for or in a timely fashion. <clears throat> and then they tell us, oh, the school committee's going to vote on this in two weeks or three weeks, and they just vote on, and we haven't talked to them or they haven't uh, discussed can, any of this with us. We can request that they come. I cannot force them I understand. to come, I, but I we understand can make that. an invitation. But No, but you, but. But it's no different than. If, we just met with the, that's a, the, head, so. Right, but the school committee is the committee. They're the ones that vote on it. But however, the problem is, is that they have to take the initiative. We can invite them. That's it. That's you talking about the entire do. school committee, or just our members? Just school. our members. Okay. No, not all. No. No. Yeah. Well, just three, our, right? our, our representatives. Right. I think. And, I think it would be nice to request them. Right. Sure. We'll see if they come. Well, yeah. I don't know if we formally ever requested them in the yes. last couple of years. We, we, last not last years. year we did not, but I know in the previous years yeah, we have, because I know we've, we've had, had we've had them. Uh, uh, they, I think we should them. ask, right? Yeah. Do, I have we'll no give issue. The, we can reach out to them, no problem. We'll so give them the courtesy of asking. What are we expecting them to bring with them? To list nothing. They're going to be here to listen to our concerns so that when they make their vote, they are fully aware of what's going so on. Maybe they'll get to see the deal. budget for the first time when they come. <laughs> so whether or not the, their not budgets the are ready should. by next Tuesday, they, we should extend the so, invitation and have them come anyway. Okay. So correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm getting a little confused by this conversation. So the administration, before they come to any of the towns, is supposed to meet with the school committee and present their budget to the school committee first. So the school committee should know what their budget is and what, what's being presented to the towns. And then we go through the cycle of beating them up and trying to get them to lower that number. And the school committee ends up coming back and re-voting it, making changes. But they, the school committee will be aware of the first version of their budget, is what I will say. Well, we, I, we, I, we, would, I would hope that you are correct in that. Well, they statement. have to be, because you, you know, Mr. That would be like me, well, I guess I sort of shouldn't say it this way, but, but presenting a budget without, you know, even considering the Board of Selectmen, right? I mean, you're supposed to... You know, conver have a conversation with your leaders before you do your budget. So I would, I can't imagine that the school committee would go, come here and present the thing without having conversation. I would with imagine the school that committee. some of the school committee know the numbers exactly. Well, the, I'm well, not saying they all. But again, I, I, aren't we just expecting or <clears throat> interested in getting the school committee, our Rutland school committee members, <clears throat> to participate with us and hear? Our concerns, yes. so that they can take that back with them when they go and they do vote. Correct. But it'd be nice if they know what the budget is. But we well, met with the school administrators in February, and they don't vote on their budget until the second. I think it was the second week of March, the last second week, or third week. Second or third week, the last two or three years. So, because they tell us right up front, well, we're. Thank you for your comments. We're going to have it voted on in three weeks from now or four weeks from now. But so the point. But the point is. <clears throat> Excuse me. The point is really that we need to be able to have, we really should have that conversation with the school committee to be able to say, you're walking in to, to vote on a budget <coughs> and you need to know what Rutland's, your town's position is. Right. And so then let them go do their thing. I mean, what, however they're going to do it. Okay. So I'm going to make sure that the invitation gets extended to our school committee members for next Thursday, Good. as long as we get the details from the school district by Tuesday. Everyone in agreement? Uh, um, because so otherwise, if we don't get them by Tuesday, I'm saying. It's well, so I guess I'm not. Sh then I'm a little bit confused, and that's just me being old. Um, uh, nice try. Well, <laughs> I'm just. I'm thinking that we do. We need to have that information to talk to the school committee people. We're not going to talk to the school committee people. We need to have the details so that they can hear what our concerns are with that. Otherwise, okay. all we're going all to right. hear is the three prongs of their mission statement okay. and how many students. And 
I can do a big okay. chunk of All it right. already. So. I got it. Yes. Is everybody else okay with that? Mm -hmm. Well, I agree with what Peter's saying, too. I mean, if you ask the school committee to come, we can at least talk with them. They, I guess they should show up either way. But, right. you know, Karen's good, right. Good way to do it. If they're coming in with the bullet paper. I understand what you're saying. But too. if we don't have the details, how are we going to have a conversation with them? They might come in lower than what we thought. And woohoo, it's, it's golden. Really? There's Maybe. always that potential. Really? Is this Karen you're <laughs> talking to? The pessimistic <laughs> way? Who's this Karen? I want to know. Oh, yeah. not the Karen I've heard. Who are you? And what are who are you? Where did you do it in real Karen? <laughs> so, there is always that potential. It's not going to happen, but there's yeah. always that potential. Okay. Oh, there may be, you know. So, I will make sure that that occurs, and um, hopefully we'll get the information from the school, and that won't be an issue. Okay. Um, okay. Ron did reach out to Lauren Goldberg, our uh, mm -hmm. town uh, attorney. Okay. Our choices to for motions. I move to recommend. I move not to recommend. I move to take no action. Those are our three choices. Sounds good. That's standard everywhere. Yeah, that sounds good. Those are our three choices. Okay. Right, direct from our town attorney. So, oh, yeah. where do we need? All right. So, at one point in time, we were talking about it's nice to be able to have um, bylaws and stuff, but there was a whole thing around procedures and um, instructions for the committee itself, how the committee operates. Is that something that would be part of the finance committee's procedures? That in the on the when we vote, that our vote would specifically be those one of those three. It's always yeah. has been one of those three. That's since I've been on the committee. It's always been one of those three. No, no, and I understand. And it. then there was some debate of whether or not it should be more than those three, and that's when I got the, right, but that, the three. Right, but, but the point that I was trying to make was that there's been there's always the question. Well, maybe we can do it differently. And, and as Peter was saying when we were in here when we were talking about the bylaws, he says, you know, the bylaws are not an operation statement. The, there's a policy statement that's separate, and maybe we should have something in a policy statement that makes that to use those so, words. I don't know. So if I could comment a little bit, right? So, and I think I just sent you guys out the finance committee handbook, which kind of sets the the overall policy for how finance committees operate right. in general. It doesn't get, I don't think, to the nitty gritty of we're talking about this particular motion process, mm -hmm. but it does set up what your responsibilities are under state law and, right. what, and the role of, of your committee. But frankly, I haven't read it in a long time, so it's nice to, to refresh my own memory on some of these issues. So I don't think you really need bylaws to get, you, frankly, you don't want bylaws that are too specific because you want to have some flexibility with right. what you're doing. So I think really the, the key issue is really understanding the policy handbook, understanding what the, what the, how you're supposed to act. And, and really a lot of this is is developed around timing of when you got to act and, and when you got to get certain things done. So mm -hmm. I, I don't see a need to get too detailed with the bylaw. And well, I think it caused more and, problems and, as well. And I agree. I, I totally agree <coughs> with the issue of the bylaws. I, I think that the was... The reason why we only change, like we have staggering years on here is so that knowledge can be transferred from Group the older group. members to the more junior right. members and continue to keep older? going. Older? She's using older? You pointed at you. Or seasoned that. professionals has nothing to do with your age. It has more to do with how many yeah, years you've been got it. privileged to be sitting on the I'm couch. just saying that, that if there's something someplace that somebody goes back to and says, I like to add something to it. No, we got it here. Yeah, there's right. the three that we've got. So yeah. for Okay. So those are the three that we've got. Okay. So now So I have a quick, one quick question. Yes. So favorable, unfavorable, and no way. So yeah. that we take no action or we recommend to the recommend town? We recommend the town take no the action. The town takes no yeah. action. Yeah. That's yeah. Your so I move to recommend the town take no action. I, I move to recommend that they take, you know. Well, you can know. You can recommend saying that you're not taking you're not taking any action. You're not recommending for or against. That doesn't necessarily mean. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's, it's our, it's, it's, Mr. Moderator, we recommend the town take no action on this warrant. We move right. that yeah. the town vote favorably. Those kinds of things. We it's recommend, we don't recommend, and we take no action. It's a result of the committee's uh, review and the vote right. that we take. Right. That's all. Okay. So, okay. 
everyone have a chance to read the new bylaw that Pete sent Look, Peter? Can I just, if yeah. you don't mind mentioning without getting into the whole budget page, can I just explain the information I put in this book so that you guys know what's there? It'll take me just less than sure. just a few minutes, right? So in this book, just so you understand, if you open up the, the cover um, on the left side, you're going to find in there the, the budget summary of the expenses up and through January 31st, okay? That's the most latest one with the latest warrant. So that gives you as much information as you can as to how money's been spent in the current year. Okay? When you open up the book, the first thing you see is a budget presentation, which goes through pretty much all the detail in a general sort of way. And then right behind it, you'll see the detailed expenditure budget that I've adopted. just want to point out that the chief kept referring to, you know, some town administrator recommendations that I made versus what he did. That's true. So just so you all understand that, I went through the departments with every department head through the budgets. I put them all in place at the numbers that they asked for. And when I realized that we we're going to have a deficit, I went back and said, okay, I need you to make some cuts. Every department head where that I've made recommendations was involved in those cut decisions. So it's not like I just arbitrarily made those cuts, just so you understand it. Um, there's a couple of key issues that you guys are going to deal with, and obviously the education budget, which you just talked about, is important. Mm -hmm. Right now, that education budget is funded at a 3.39% increase. I want to explain that because it's confusing to a lot of people. As you remember, we did a letter to the school committee and the administration saying we wanted no more than a 2.5% increase, right? right? Why is Rutland number, why did I put a number of 3.39 in the budget? But just because it's 2.5 percent on the total budget for the school district, Rutland could pay more because it's based upon population. Okay, that's why you'll see 3.39 instead of 2.5. Note the 3.39 is the exact percentage increase that we gave them last year. Okay. Now this is important. I want you guys to be thinking about when this budget comes for it because I'm going to be thinking about it and I'm going to be making comments on it is this year the school system if you look at in your book there's going to be something i think it's called a it's called a cherry sheet for the school district this year their chapter 70 money went up by close to two and a half million dollars they're in way better position in terms of state funding than they were last year last year at the end of all the nonsense and we got to the end process of the school system the school system the district only went up by 2.39 percent so it didn't even go up by two and a half percent that was the end stage. Remember, it started off with 961,000 increase, yeah. ended up at like 400 and something thousand dollar increase, right? So I, in my projection, I used the same percentage increase as we gave them last year at 3.39, right? That's how that's calculated. You're gonna see a few items, and I'll end with this. You're gonna see a few things in this budget that are up in the air. In the last couple of years, we've used $418,000 of new growth as a calculation, okay? Harold so far has only given us an estimate of using 350,000 in new growth. The reason he does that is because he's, we're not going to know for sure until we start seeing the building permits in the spring. I think all of us are expecting that the growth in Rutland is still at the same level, at least as it's been last year. But I want you to know that Harold <coughs> hasn't given us that full number. I used in this budget the 418, because that's what I expect, but that number's there. Bay Path, the number's in there. They haven't given us the presentation yet, but I did talk to them and they gave me an estimate. There's five new students at Bay Path this year. Mm -hmm. So you'll see a little over a $50,000 increase in Bay Path this year. They're still at the minimum foundation level. You'll see some potential changes. The health care account is budgeted at 7.5%. You can expect that that will go down a little bit. We figure that coop will drop. We don't know. We, but we're pretty confident. It's not going to go down by big numbers, but it, it should go down by a little bit. Bay Path transportation might go down a little bit. Uh, ConCom is going to come for you for a couple of hundred dollar change. We know that. And there's some significant changes we're going to be talking about with dispatch because of how grants and stuff come in and timing of stuff. So that's going to be another issue that uh, we'll have to talk about that relates to a new staff member and how that's funded through grants and stuff. I received that this afternoon. I will get all of that out to you guys yep. over the weekend. I just Ran out of time yeah. So any changes here on that I got from department heads, I'm referring to you guys because I cannot change the budget anymore. The finance committee has to now make any changes to the budget. And I will let you know if my department heads request stuff, but it, from now on, any changes that come to that budget are come before you guys for those changes. Make sense? So you right now. So what so what you're saying to me is you have a I wanna make this right. <clears throat> Yeah, just shooting out kind of 
help you with it. So you have a level, for, you have a budget. This budget is balanced. It's balanced. Right now. Right, right now it's balanced. With the, with the way the school is. With the, with with, the, with the with number that I told right you, the 3.39% is balanced. You have 100% balanced, balanced yeah. budget right now. The, the issue that, that I want to work with you guys on, quite frankly, is I, my goal when I set this budget to only use $100,000 in free cash to balance this budget. Right now, this budget is about $125,000 in free cash. I think we need to lower that down to avoid future problems and try to use this, the lowest amount of free cash we can because that free cash is what deals with the capital items. So if we can get out of using free cash, that gives us more money to, to fix buildings and do a lot of other things. So we need, to, we need to look at that. But the school number, in theory, could go down or it could go up. So that could be a problem, right? The budget, in this budget, I'm using a 2% salary increase for all the four unions that are up, which is fire, DPW, police sergeants, and police patrol. There's 2% in there, but there's nothing else in it for like uniform allowances or any of that stuff. Those are all under negotiation. So we'll see how those come out. But, but I wanted to at least get 2% in there so that you know we had a foundation to work from. Right. The other thing that's in this budget and uh, that you're gonna see in the Selectman's budget, there's an, a line item that says step increases. And I put in about $15,000 in that line item. The Carol of Selectman um, Benoit and Selectwoman um, Whiteman are both working on a plan to try to solve, you know how we keep stiffing non-union people from steps that they should have gotten? Mm -hmm. They are working on some kind of plan that they're going to bring forward. But I put that money in there so when they come up with a plan, we have something to work with. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to fund it, right? So that's in the budget as well. So we're miles ahead of where we were last year in this budget process. Mm -hmm. um, but there's a, you know, there are some unknowns that we're going to have to deal with as they come up, and we'll, we'll work through them as we go. But I, I feel a lot better about this. But I will. My, my last comment is we are, as we have been in this town, I think, for a long time, Penny pinching everything. We, we we can't provide the kind of, in my opinion, we're trying to get to 20, 21 levels of service, and not even levels of service. It, it costs, mm -hmm. and we're not increasing our service. We're actually cutting our services by offering the same amount of money we did in twenty twenty one. But that's where we are because we're using all of the free cash money, or all of the um, the uh, chapter uh, proposition two and a half money and the new growth. And I used an extra hundred thousand dollars of revenue from car taxes because we've had a, a significant increase in car taxes. So that was your point last year, Darren. That we are not the budget is level funded. It's the services are not not level services, it's right? It keeps going that way. Yep. We've not gained on that. No. Nope. Nope. Buddy. So let me ask: What is your rationale? I know how. Vietnam, you were opposed to using free cash to love the fund budgets. Yeah. What made you do that this year? Just because you had no other options? Listen, my goal was 100. I, I pinched and pegged, and I, I called the chief, a police chief, up and said cuts, and the fire chief, those cuts, just to get, and I couldn't get any more down. I, I penny pinched this budget as much as I could get down to. So, you know, you're going to have a temptation looking at this budget of how we increase money, because I'm. I'm Trying just to keep afloat with twenty twenty one dollars, so you know I'm not gonna lie to you. In my opinion, we don't fund this town properly in terms of maintaining services. But I can only deal with the money revenues I have, so that's what that's what I did. Uh, but you know, okay. I used one hundred twenty five because I couldn't figure out how to get any lower. Okay, I'm just no, I know. It, it, listen, when you when when the police chief says, you know, there's two things that I did here, right? I took out. The equipment you were talking about with the fire chief, I took out those turnout cares. I took it and I said, Chief, we're going to fund that with free cash because I, I don't have any money in the budget. And I, I don't want that. That's not a repetitive every year purchase in theory. Mm -hmm. So we can use free cash for that, right? So that made some sense to me. The other thing that I took out is budget. When you get to the police budget, there's a lease car and it's about ten, eleven thousand dollars for lease. I took that out. And we're going to fund that through free cash. But I'm, I, listen, I, I penny pinched this budget as much as I possibly could to get it to balance. And we will need to make further cuts because there were some mistakes made along the way, not by Rome, by department heads. So. Well, yeah, they just made some changes since I, they, they actually told me about the, well, Mike didn't because Mike came in after I closed it, but conservation came to me and said it changed the day I was finished the budget. I'm not going to rework all my numbers for 500 we bucks. Have, there's an error in the salary, oh, the salary the assessors, gone, yeah. and so there's going to be some stuff. Um, I have. Wait a minute. That's not 
I'm not going down this dusty trail again of <coughs> us making the cuts and taking it. No, it's not a cut. It's a, it's actually an increase. She underfunded the line item for the part-time Karen, I'm not going to get beat up again last year yeah, we're like not I did last year because yeah, I, the finance committee cut my budget. I we're not doing that. that. So I, I understand that. And what I'm saying is, is we're going to have to talk with as we're going through things. Okay. There's no... Because they're, because they, they've all come, and I don't know how many more we're going to get. I, I got a slew today. And once I have the time to go through... But you know where I'm going with this. We do not need to get yeah. beat up around yeah. town. I agree. I agree. You know, so Karen. I just wanted you to know that there are some changes coming through. And yeah. we will... The, this, budget, this budget has no cuts to any staff in it, period. And it gives colos. Right, but I don't want to be at the coffee shop getting beat up about cutting somebody's budget. Hmm. I'm not... that. That's not I, I. I tell you, I'll give you my quick observance. At least I think where we're at. I don't think there's going to be a lot of change that you have to make to this budget. I don't think there's going. I think this budget's in pretty good shape. Well, that, you shouldn't I'm have to make to big changes that. to this budget. Just that's what I think. Nice, well, you got to go through the process, and there's going to be some changes and some modifications. Truthfully, we might get a little bit more money from state revenues too, as the governor, as the house budget comes out, and the senate budget. So there's some potential for some new revenue here that, too. So there's there's some changes we have to make just because it's timing stuff. But but I don't see the kind of big shit we had to do last year. But but here's why. Just the last kind of here's why. It's because last year when I came here, I was told that we had to use the school number that they gave us in part of the budget. So I used the full school number they gave us, which was ridiculous. And then we cut from there. Remember? That was crazy. And we used, you know, for whatever, I'm not going to get into the debate about, but we used $405,000 of free cash that caused a problem. So those two issues are gone now. I use the number that I think is what we can afford to spend in the school going. budget, and we're only using $125,000 free cash. They're not so going because if the school comes in with another well, then we're gonna have to number, deal with it. we are going to need to do another, because you can't, at right. town floor, go, huh, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to have to vote. I mean, you're going to have to try to get the vote. Let's assume the school come in at 150 grand more. Well, there's two ways you could deal with it. We could try to find money and do cuts and all that stuff, or we could just say, you know what, we're going to town meeting and this is the money we're recommending. And then if the town votes for that extra money, then we decide if we're going to try doing an override or we're going to cut. But so it would be a fair assumption that something's going on at the school because we haven't seen their actual budget budget numbers yet, right, Karen? Well, that's typical. It's not. There's no surprise here. This is part of their process. They when put do together. When we usually get it? Um, about 45 minutes before our meeting. Yeah, last year we got a couple of days early. We got we last year. Because we put pressure on me and you. Very, very yeah, late. We're, yeah, we're at a Very, very late. But usually yeah. it's about 45 minutes before. I, I don't think they want and this is this case. They don't want us to see it too soon. <laughs> so because we asked too many questions. To look well, at it and ask questions. We did he can look at it. Yeah. He gets but the you guys. thing is, I'm going to say this. Yeah, I get it. I give it last year we got the budget book. And that was the first time ever we've yeah. gotten the budget book. Yeah. So. so it's so, the first time ever. Let me say this to you, right? If you look at my budget presentation from previous years and you look at the numbers of the school increases, it was 4%, 5% all through the year. Last year, at the end of the day, it was 2.39. That was because of a lot of that was the pressure that us, all the town managers in the area put on them. We started early with that process and put that pressure on and documented and sent the letter to them and stuff. They understand where we're at. So, and, and you know, I, I got on a, off the phone with Peter Lukes today who, who put in a much more generous increase in his budget than I did, but in order to fund the budget, you have to do an override, and he's done that, and and he knows that that's going to piss off a lot of people in town. So he did yep. that to sort of start the fire. <laughs> and but but I am not. But I'm yeah, I'm expecting. I'm expecting that I think the two and a half percent. If you did the two and a half percent increase, I don't have the exact number in front of me, but I want to say it was about two point six million dollar increase for the school budget. If Chapter 70 goes up by 2.3 million, see, that's that says to me that the town shouldn't have to fund a lot, right? But let's see what happens. Those are the things uh -huh. we need to see. But we're going to have that conversation. I'm not going to let them get away with it at the meeting because I will raise that point of how come you know we asked you two and a half percent, you got 2.3. We should only be making up the all the towns come should only make up the difference to get you the 2.5. Right. And if they had a horrible present, if they had a horrible amount of state revenue given to them last year, and they got down to 2.39 percent. Why can't they get down to 2.39 percent this year, right? Because yeah, they had all those all good all that federal money. Last well, year. they got the, 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 what they did is they that all took care of care stuff. Yeah. No, it wasn't cares. It was something else that they had, and I'm sorry, I forget the acronym. But, but there was so, another one that they. There yeah. was another thing. Yeah. 
Esser funds, thank you. E S yeah, that was, I, I remember this from Sarah, but I'm like, no, that was, that's not it. That's something else. That was a hundred and something thousand dollars. That wasn't huge numbers. And I don't even know if they ever yeah, got listen, that. Listen, it's, it's, it's money. Yeah. Anyway, that, that we're in much better shape. Yeah, that's the good news. And if anybody has questions off cycle when you're not meeting, don't be afraid to give me a call. I'm happy to go through it. I went through it the other day with um, Peter, and I'm happy to go through it. Anybody who has yeah, any I questions. Walk, I barged into his office. <laughs> yeah, we spent, I just hope that we don't. Yeah. I'm good. Let's... Okay. I'm good with this back. So, yep. did good everyone back. have a chance to look at the... Right. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you, Karen. I think that's what we said, right? Yeah. There's no it changes. Is. I, I am trying to make sure that we are done with it so yes. that they can move on. Yes, I can. The only thing that he... 30. The paragraphs that we asked to keep in, the only thing he changed, he put them in two or three sentences, right? That's the way I read it. Okay. It's what, what we asked for. Mm -hmm. It's what he had put on the screen. And the one paragraph, remember, we had one, but he's made, I think he's made it into three separate numbers there. Yeah, I think he paragraph. did, yeah. That's what he's going to do. He was right. going it's to the same uh, wording. The same wording, right. but it's three, yeah. Right. yeah. So it looked to me like it. I thought the thing was right with, I, right. I would vote to. Motion to approve it. Oh, Second, can we do that? Second. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, opposed? Okay. Great. Perfect. Um, and, and unfortunately, you had an incident at your house that night. It was the easiest. I thought we were going to be in for a little sled fight or dog fight there, and it went so smoothly. Yeah, it didn't yeah, work well. it, um, I got to tell you. I was ready for a fight. We were all ready to go, <laughs> and it worked out really well. He so came in with a bit. It was a so I will let you had your incident, but it I went well. He's here, so he'll care that we're good. Um, all right, so the only thing left now is just getting scheduling squared away. Once we figure all that out, I'll send it out. We got some emails today. I will get them out to you. Please just give me until Saturday. Yep. <laughs> I'm up early, but I go to bed early. <laughs> um. Have we got anything else important? I think that's it. Uh, make sure. a motion to adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to second whatever he was going to say. Um. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. We are adjourned at 824.